Oh, yeah. Messing my hair. Ow! Ooh, God, bless America. Look at that. Here, pull this to you. Check, check, check. There you go. So it looks like we've got a phone number there. Video one, video two. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. All right. So, do a speaking to the microphone. I want to make sure your mic's on. Sana, sana, colita, yeah. rana. <laughs> and then let me make sure you're on camera. Yeah, you are. You are on camera. All right. All right. Man, you, I didn't realize how handsome you are. I know. Huh? Camera. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> all right, man. I think so my wife told me that the other day. Well, she, <laughs> I didn't right? realize. She's all looking, man. I'm taking a photo of you in a while. You didn't. You're not bad. You're not a bad looking guy. This looks great. Uh, the only thing I miss is. Uh, oh, put the microphone. Uh, the only, the Not only to suck on it, but you know. Oh. <laughs> the only thing I miss is the uh, the sauna. Yeah, you know, man. It's. Uh, Would you break that down? Yeah, it's in my storage right now. I'm, I'm trying to sell it. Are you? It's not that I don't want it. It's just that, um, you know, there's nowhere to put it. I mean, I'm not going to put it in here. It just would mess up the vibe in here. Would it? Or maybe you can. Well, I don't know. It kind of seems like it would. Oh, I kind of feel like it would. I don't know about that. I don't think so. Uh, I remember that door. A couple of so, uh, so almost went through that. Huh? Which door? The door. What do, you mean, what do you mean someone went through it? No, we almost went through it when we were rolling. Remember we used to have this? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, well, you know, I still have all my my pads and stuff are over in the other garage. Oh, there? Yeah. Uh, she's probably going to sell them. <laughs> <laughs> Make your money back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Get something out of it. <laughs> Are we recording right now? Are we live? We're not live, but okay. we are recording. All right. Yeah, so I'm toggling back and forth with the camera. So you're on camera right now. Okay, cool. And then I'm on camera. So I know you can't really see because my laptop is... Uh, it's all good. But you are kind of at an angle. So, yeah. And like you bring go. yourself this way a little bit. Like your chair. Like to the side, not, not back, but to the side. Yeah, I'm going to the side. Not going I can't back. tell. There you go. Perfect. There you go. All right, good, man. You know, I don't know if anyone's ever told you this, man, but you look like Wolford. Wolford? Yeah. You're, you're smoking rock. No, man. man. You guys, I noticed no, it the other day. You're crazy. He's I a was white totally, guy. He's I know, a, he's I know. It's so weird. But I was totally looking at you guys the other day when, uh, during promotions. Were you smoking or? Uh, like, no. Like, you know, I was like, I saw you. Spirit but, high I, or something? but I saw you guys. No, dude. I saw Not you guys all. side no. by side. No. I was like, holy crap, they kind of look like a like, alike. And then right now, I saw him no, again. And no, 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 no. Does that bother you? He's not a bad looking guy. Oh, he's not a bad looking guy. He's a pretty looking guy, actually. Not, yeah, well, I don't know about that, but <laughs> the truth comes out. <laughs> yeah. It's good to be here, I mean, It's a, actually really good, really good uh, weather today. It's, so, it's great weather. It's fantastic, actually. It's, uh, I think it's going to get hot this week. You mean like, like, like right now, you mean? Or hotter than, right than right now? Hotter than right now, yeah. Uh, it's like actually, high, high, high it almost 70. feels like summer. You know what I, I mean? I think we're supposed to go into, uh, we're supposed to go a little higher this week. Yeah, 76 actually tomorrow. 76, wow. 74, 73, 74, 72. Oh, that's great, man. So like tomorrow's going to be a good day for skinny dipping or whatever. Yeah, you know? so it's you can run, out, run outside in your skibbies. Yeah, I mean, right now is probably the time that I start working on that <laughs> beach bot. <laughs> Because uh, hey, listen, I you know I lost twenty five pounds already. Dude, you're doing so. great. Yeah, dude, I yeah, actually amazing. went down two more pounds. So oh, I'm did at, you? Like two eighteen now. So um, what's the deal? What are you doing that to make that happen? Stress. <laughs> <laughs> stress. That's about it. Sounds no, great. what I did is actually I went to um, you know I, after I kind of uh, started phasing out at the at the uh, market, um, I started eating once a day and just I had a lot of time to just relax and start uh, exercising. So I got on the bike. We have, you know, for, fortunate we have a Peloton bike out there. So I got on that, started doing 20 minutes. Now I'm up to like half an hour, 40 minute rides. Okay. And that's really good. It's really good for sweating. And then it got, and that kind of just kind of drew me in and I started working out, doing the half an hour or doing like 50 minutes, going in and doing a little hit with exercises, dumbbells and, you know, TRX and all that kind of stuff outside. And Did you then, say hit as yeah, in like high intensity, intensity training? In interval training, high interval intensity training, something like that. High interval yeah. intensity, high intensity interval training. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what I started. Doing. I didn't well, know whatever. That, they, I didn't know what that stood the for for the longest there. time. Just, let's just say hit. That's hit. it. It's hit training. So. Hit training. Right. Um, so I did that, and you know, honestly, I think that stress had a little bit to do with it as well. So, but I went from I was like at two 
45, something like that. And then I just dropped down to like 240 right away. Yeah. And then I started doing a little bit more, a little bit more and everything. So, and then of course I got an opportunity because it wasn't working. Um, I did four, I was doing four nights a week actually rolling. So, which is kind of cool. I did Monday. Um, I was doing the, actually Tuesdays with Wolford, but I did Mondays with uh, the guys over at the mountain, um, Jason Eisner. Yeah. And I did Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays with him. And then, uh, and then now I'm trying to get in to uh, get a private with no every, every week guy. Actually, okay, yeah, but well, I'm training with the guys in Whittier. Well, I remember uh, you had lost a lot of weight during the pandemic, or no, I when you got a lot. sick. Like I, I, yeah, I, but there was a time you got sick and you dropped a lot of weight. Yeah, I dropped like close to twenty five pounds or something like that. Yeah, and then I remember, yeah. and then I noticed you you put it back on. Oh yeah, I did. I was like, well, I lost it, and then I went looking for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I found it. Yeah, and, and, yeah. and but but you've been able to get back off, get the weight back off. You're saying basically you're intermittent fasting. Yeah, basically I am. I'm, I only yeah. eat once a day, so I do whatever I like. So no snacking or anything well, in between? No, I still snack a little oh, bit. But well, then how's that intermittent fasting if you're snacking? No, I mean, I like to snack after I eat maybe a little bit, but I, oh, don't, really, I, I don't really eat that much. So, you're, so what are you doing exactly? Are you like have like a small window that you could eat food? and? I just eat with my wife. My wife and my son want to eat dinner. That's about it. So I eat dinner okay. once a night. So And also when I work out in here at Cricket Gaff, I eat with them mm-hmm. after our shift. And then, uh, you know, I just... That's it. That's I don't, I don't eat till the next day, till whatever it may be, 24 hours, actually. I think that intermittent fasting stuff works, man, because yeah. I was losing some pretty decent amount of weight uh-huh. uh, doing intermittent fasting. And then I, when, as soon as I started working this this job, uh-huh. uh, which was back, I started in a, uh, February 5th. Uh-huh. And after about three, four, after like a week, I, I noticed I started snacking at work. Did you? And then it's right there. It's so easy to do that. Yeah. And you know, you're bored at, you know, you're tired and, right. or you're just, you're at work and you right. just, all of a sudden I just started snacking. Right. right. And now I kind of got myself off the psychological, you know, uh, it's pure. I, I realize it's for me, it's psychological. Like it I, I, I want to eat now. Well, I think for me, I don't know about you, but I know though for me, it's comforting. You know what I mean? Very, like, especially very. right now, like I, I, I would love to, you know, get a big old cookie and two, two or three cookies and a glass of milk and just do that. Mm, you know, my yeah. problem was that, especially with the restaurant I was working at, I would come home and, you know, another thing too is I've been sober for going on almost 70 days now. So that's another thing. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about that. How, well, first of all, what was going on that you felt that you needed to get off the sauce and then how did you do it? And then how's that been going? Like, well, obviously you've been being sober for 70 days, mm-hmm. but, but, Talk a little bit about that. I think, you know, <laughs> the way it came about was me and my, my brother-in-law actually were hanging out and uh, Christmas Christmas Eve, actually, we're talking about, you know, he's relatively our age, you know, 40-ish, 50-ish, like uh, that kind of t- t- uh, age bracket. And we're talking about losing weight because he's having problems with his knees. And in the past, I've had problems with my knees. And I said, well, you know, you just got to stop drinking. He's like, well, why don't you stop drinking? I said, well, let's stop drinking together. Yeah. And so that's kind of like how it came to fruition. And we agreed that we would go till February 15th. We're going to stop that, that day after. Mm-hmm. And then we're going to go to February 15th. So that was the kind of impetus of it all. Okay. So it wasn't like, like you had a deba- night of debauchery. And no, you, not at all. Uh-uh. Got in a bar fight or anything? No, okay. no, oh, so no, it's just so interesting. Okay, yeah. So you know, but for me, honestly, I think after I kind of decided to do it, it kind of coupled with my walk with Christ, and I said, well, uh, you know, this is kind of gonna, it's a twofold thing that I can benefit from, you know, because for me, you know, I was the kind of guy that, you know, I didn't really drink a lot, but when I did, I drank a lot. You yeah. Know? So if I had one, I'll have four, and that kind of like in me. one hour. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes sometimes but what i would do is um you know i would actually eat and then yeah, i have to come in home from work i would actually drink and then i'd eat and then i'd go to sleep late at night and then yeah. i'd be kind of you know i mean as we get older our body doesn't process alcohol like it, it did when we were living. Anymore, yeah, yeah not at all man and so what i would do is i would go to sleep and the next day i would be lethargic and i kind of sit back i'd you know i'd miss practice or i wouldn't go to the gym or i'd just be lethargic and you know i wasn't Nothing bad was coming to it. Actually, sometimes every now and then, you know, my alcohol would like cause me to be a real dick with my wife. Yeah, so yeah, that, was big, that was a big. That was thanks. <laughs> you know what I mean? But that's a big thing. So I had a, a lot of self reflection, and you know, my thing is I talked about my my walk with Christ, and it really convicted me. It's like, well, listen, who are you? You know, and they say, you know, the truth always comes out when you drink, and so for me, that kind of showed me inside who I was, and so what I had to do is really come correct and say, you know, I just got on my knees one day and just said, you know, God. I don't want to be that person. 
Yeah. So I did that. And it just, you know, it wasn't anything. I didn't really miss it at all. I, it wasn't, it was like, you know, I don't want to say some kind of supernatural, you know, oh, that kind of you know, thing, but it happened. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I noticed it was also better for my body. Um, you know what, the next day I was present, I was present for Jake, you know, my son spending time with him, you know, even hanging out with him, doing little things like that. I wasn't laying in bed. I had, you know, kind of the energy to get up and work out. Mm. And then it just kind of continued to continue. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, is that my brother-in-law never stopped. Oh, no. <laughs> he, did, he didn't. So I was the only well, one. Well, it's not did. funny. But yeah, yeah, well, I know, <laughs> yeah. but it's kind of, yeah. But, you know, that was kind of the one thing that happened. And, um, you know, and so he hasn't seen me yet. He hasn't seen me lighter. And so my, 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 my sister-in-law, my, my uh, wife are always telling him, hey, man, when you see Justin, you're going to be wishy that, you know. You haven't seen each other in seven months? We ha no, no, this was. Uh, or 70 days ago? No, I haven't seen him since we stopped. Okay. Whatever it was, February, actually, it was not that day, but it was like the last day. It was actually the day that I got the notice that we're going to be laid off at the market. Yeah. So I came home and I just, you know, I didn't tie one on, but like I had, you know, three or four. And then I just said, that's it. Yeah. No more. And well, so, yeah. well, that's pretty amazing. And, uh, you know, when you talk about being present, mm -hmm. uh, that was that was a concept I could not wrap my head around uh, when Tessa used to tell me, you know, you're not present. Mm. You're, you're not present. And I'd be like, I remember everything you said yesterday. Like, I don't know what you're talking about. And it, it took me, you know, because uh, it had been a whole year or more before I actually stopped drinking. Mm. This, this April will be a year. Oh, that's great. Praise God. Yeah, praise God. And... Uh, but for that whole time, I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. And it wasn't until I finally got off the sauce and started functioning as a non-drinker mm. that I started the whole concept of being present started to click. Yeah. And I was just like, ah. Oh. It's a different kind of clarity, actually. You know, it's, it's it is. really, it's a trip because, you know, uh, Monday was, this last Monday actually was uh, me and my wife, we had our 23rd anniversary. So 23 years, 23 years. Yeah. 23 years. I know. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. I'm so happy for you, man. And, and, and actually you guys, uh, celebrated that yesterday, right? Uh, no, that was actually last, last Monday, just last, last. Monday. Oh, that was yeah. last week. Yeah, when we, talked. we could go okay. tomorrow. We could be like well, last Monday, but that actually the applause should be for her. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not me. so you know, I, she has her own things, but you know, um, for me it was, you know, she got a margarita. And I said, hey, can I taste that? And I just like put my straw in there, but I just wanted to taste the mix and see uh -huh. what kind of things. And then did you? Yeah, I did. Yeah. I just like, put a little drop on my tongue. But, you know, I was able to say, oh, OK, this is fresh squeeze, you know, lime juice and all that stuff. If but, you were a natural alcoholic, that would have been you would have to start all over. Yeah, no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> but I am an alcoholic, you know, so I mean, yeah. listen, I love drinking. I really right, like I, I do, like to I taste. I love the taste of mezcal. I love the taste of beer. You know, what I mean, but for me, I also have to recognize that, you know, that's also part of my business sometimes is I have to try it. Um, but you know the like uh, a while ago when I was tasting wine over here at uh, at the at the gaff down here in Whittier, I was trying it and I I swirled it and then I spit it out. And um, that's usually how you taste wine. You know, yeah. you can't taste. You know, if you go through thirty wines, you know, do you'll be kind too of drunk. Oh yeah, totally. But yeah. the tongue, but tongue still absorbs alcohol. But uh, I chased it and spit it out, and then one of the waiters was like, "Hey, what are you doing?" I said, "I'm tasting." He's like, "Yeah, but don't you have to swallow it?" I said, "Absolutely not. You can get all that stuff. You get all the." You know all your senses and Absolutely. everything are tested. Yeah. So, but um, but it's funny because uh, actually I was gonna taste it again, and my wife said, "Hey, no, no, don't do that." I said, "Ease up, ease up, <laughs> calm down." I'm not. I got drinking. this. I got this. It's okay. So, but um, yeah, you know, uh, but going back, you know, that just kind of it just kind of happened, and I don't really miss it at all. You know, I actually I thought thought the other day of uh, getting a non-alcoholic beer, but for me, but, but why? I, well, because I like to taste the beer. Do you? No one likes to taste the beer. I do know. You know, you I like do. the the actual taste. I of like beer? the actual taste of beer. Yeah, but oh. for me, I said, you know what? Let me just let me just not go there. I said, you know, I don't know if that would be like you know my gateway beer. <laughs> right, so, like that, right? <laughs> you know, so I just said, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and step back. I'm not going to. I'm not going to drink. I'm not going to. You know, I just 100 percent sold out. You know, so. Um, but it's really cool. I, mean, I, I think that's amazing, man. Yeah. I, I think it's great, and hallelujah for that. Amen. I mean, you do look amazing. Thank you. you I appreciate great. that. My, my, sound, I, was, I could hear it in your voice. I was able to fit into my A2 gear. <laughs> 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 I, 
I leveled up one time. I remember I had to go and my mom, when I started going back to jiu-jitsu, I mean, like, what it was like two years ago, something like that, when I started really training again. Yeah. Um, I, I went and tried out my gi and it didn't fit. I couldn't right. fit my belt around. Yeah. And I remember I had to go back into my first gi that I ever had, this Atama A3 gi, right? And right. I said, oh, my fat boy gi. And I remember <laughs> Jaime, Jaime from our academy down at Tillis, he was laughing. He's letting me think. He's like, ah, yeah, welcome to the age, old man. Right, right. So, but, um, but now I'm, you know, finishing them down. So I kind of still uh, wear A3s, but only because I like the fit of them. Do you have any uh, old uh, regular jackets that you've been holding on to, hoping one day you'll be able to fit into them again? Oh, yeah, that's all I'm talking about. Oh, I not your geese, but I mean regular jackets. Oh, like regular jackets? Yeah, oh, like, I, like, I still like what you're wearing right now. Yeah, so. this is a little extra large, but I mean, I still have my l- large T-shirts that I still uh, have a stack of them. I was right. like, what are you doing? With this? Why don't you just get rid of them? I'll shh, be quiet. Right. <laughs> well, I got these really cool jackets. Uh-huh. Like bomber, like just different jackets uh-huh. uh, that I have, but they, I, I have to be about 180 pounds. Oh, you do? Wow. Yeah. What do you have right now? I'm at 215. Are you? 210, I'm at, yeah. uh, 218 actually yesterday. Oh, are you? Yeah, 218. So I, I want to get down to like 195. If I can get 190, 195, it'd be really good. I mean, for me, you know, I'm 5'9, um, you know, but also I'm, you know, thicker build, I guess you could say, you know, I just. But I think I'll probably be you say thicker build, thicker build. Yeah, I don't think that's a real thing. It's, it's <laughs> what it is now. So it's official now. It's on. It's online. Right. So, but you know, like one ninety five, I think would be good. One ninety five. Oh, one like ninety five. You'll you look great, man. Yeah. So because I know what I would look at at one ninety five. Yeah. I mean, I know I don't look it, but I mean, no, you look great, man. You know, thanks, like man. The, the other day, did you see that picture I posted of us uh, at the promotions? Yeah, I look, you know, like, I look like a pos man. Wait, why? Not even. You look you great. Look horrible. Not even. We're, we're both there. I, I'm like, we're both of us are there. I think it looked great. We got a lot of compliments. Thanks, man. We got we? Oh, cool. I didn't, I didn't receive those, but well, it must have been on your page. It was. <laughs> <laughs> they, they forwarded it to me, said, you look yeah. great. I won't say anything else about Dre. Right. Remember, no, those, those, I, I those, remember, those, remember those happy faces where it's oh, like they're crying? Yeah. I don't think those are good. Uh, the, <laughs> I think they're the laughing at you. Joy. Yeah. Uh, no, but you know, I remember when you first started, dude. I remember when you oh, first started. Oh, well, yeah. Like, if we go yeah, there, yeah. yeah, it's night or day, man. Yeah, I mean, totally. was 250. Actually, yeah. you know who sent me a picture from the other day? Who? Or sent me a picture the other day of my first month in jiu-jitsu is Kenny Lawson. Oh, really? Yeah, he sent me a photograph because we were, we, were, we were arguing over – uh when i started uh-huh. he's like no you've been training longer than seven years i was like no nah, yeah. man i started seven and a half years ago are you sure that's all to it that's it that's wow. it wow yeah, i started when i was 38 years old i'm 45 now wow and dude. uh it seems like a long time well dude he could only find one that was seven and a half years oh, old and i was like dude that was my first that was like my first month oh wow and uh dude 250 pounds just looked like a miserable soul and i was i mean i was in a really dark bad place and, and at that time and i wow. i almost didn't stick it out with jujitsu the only reason why that month that I stayed in jujitsu, I was about to quit. Uh huh. And but Noah ran my credit card. Yeah, I told him to do that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, it, well, he ended up running, and I was like, "All right, I'll do one more month." I might as well. Cool. I just paid for it. You know, like, there's nothing I can do about it now. It was my credit card, but my, you know, I did. The Lord works in mysterious ways. Right? Sure did. And it was I mean, great. It was, I'm glad that he did because yeah. I never stopped after that. Oh, that's good. Just, just kept going. Well, you know, yeah. there's a lot of you know. I think with me as I as I get older. There's a lot of parallels in jiu-jitsu and Christianity, especially in my walk with God. Absolutely. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, I, I know we talked about in the past, but for me, it's kind of like, it's like church, right? That's why right. I always call it my other therapy mat right. or my other therapy couch is jiu-jitsu. Right. And I don't think that, you know, because you could sit around and it would only be, hey, I want to get in this shape. But jiu-jitsu actually forces you to be in this shape, especially for, you know, guys my age, guys your age. I mean, you got a lot of these young guys now that are blue belts. So I'm actually tearing it up. I right, mean, they're, uh, yeah. they're all over me. They're, they're, well, right on right. So, I mean, they want, they see that color belt and they want to go after that. They want the, they want the, the props, I think. You know what I mean? Yep. Every now and then you got to be, I mean, you know, especially me, I'm really careful about who I roll with now. Absolutely. I mean, there's, I, there's no ego in my game. Right. I don't have anything to prove anymore. You know, I think uh, probably about a, two months ago, I was actually at, you know, just before I took my private. And well, some call, some blue belt asked me to roll, and I was like, oh, "Okay, cool." You know, I just do. Forget that man. Oh, that he was all out. over me. Oh, oh yeah, dude. I was like, I was gassing and everything, and he was all over me. And I finally got him, you know, on side control, and I was just kind of like, I just said, "Hey, bro, this is not worlds right now. So yeah, call, yeah. Call, call, slow your roll." Man. They had to say that at the East LA uh, the tournament yesterday. Oh, did they? Ron, Ron, the owner over there, he's uh-huh. like. You got to remind everybody, hey man, this is not worlds. It's a friendly it's tournament. It's a friendship yeah, tournament, right? It's a friendship it's a, tournament. Yeah. 
Uh, I saw some good matches there actually yesterday. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah thanks, I saw for, some. thanks for sticking around too, by the way. Dude. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> Whatever. I, <laughs> <laughs> you tell me I'm leaving at one. I was like, okay, cool. I just go, go see him for a little bit. And I walk in, it's 12 o'clock. You're not there. So I, know, so I didn't realize how fast you were going to get dude, there. Dude, it's two miles from my house. I didn't realize that. That's man. great. Yeah. I, I thought maybe you were like 30 minutes out. I was no, like, dude, I, it's really, I'm really up sure. the street. I mean, it's right there on what, Eastern? Well, it's just uh, west of Eastern. Right. Um, but, you know, going back to this, yeah, and I kind of, I kind of just, you know, after I was like telling Noah, I was like, "Hey, this guy was all over me." He's like, "So what if they're all over you?" He's like, "You got nothing to prove. You know how long you've been working. You know, you how long you've been in jujitsu. You know, look at you. Look yeah. at what you've done. You know, I mean, look at, you know, look at look at your belt rank. You know, he says you you earn this rank. Yeah, exactly. you know, And I said, I was like, wow. You know, he kind of like kind of brought into ball perspective. And I said, you know, you're right because yeah. you know I guess you have a younger guy. I'm an older guy. You know, you have some guy all over you. You want to kind of put him in his place a little bit." You know, and I thought to myself, you know, my ego got the best of me. It always, a, it, I mean, that, it, it, that's a part of the game. Yeah, it really the is. E the ego is. Well, the ego checking is now part of my game. You know, I got to check my ego because I have to recognize my own shortcomings. Just, I can't go out there, you know, like, especially with takedowns because of, you know, my knees in the past. Yeah. I can't do that. I can't, you know, go and uchimata somebody. I used to be able to do that, right? right. I used to be able to, you know, I started jiu-jitsu when I was like, uh, shoot, 37, 38, something like that. Right. And, uh, you know, my, my whole game was different. I mean, I remember I was 220 and that was the heaviest I've ever been. And I dropped down. I was I was competing at like 187, 185 like that. Okay. And dude, I was just tearing it up. And it was great because I was able to keep with these guys, these 20 somethings that were coming in. But I still had my under 40 strength, mm. you know. And so then now being over 50, you know, there's not a lot of guys that are my age that are still in the game. There are that there are, there are you know multiple level black belts, three or four degree black belts. Yeah. And they're um, not coming for your head either. No, they're not either. Cause, cause that's right. what people may not realize about, uh, you know, when you're a brown black belt level, you think you would think people will avoid you, but no, no. it's a target on your no. back <laughs> and they're head hunting you. They really are. You are now the prey. Yeah, it really is. Because I love it when the black belts come in. Cause I, 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 I want to go and beat the black belts. You do. Especially when I was a white and blue belt. I, oh, I, I love it when the black belts come because I just want to yeah. murder you. Yeah, you know? I want to, I want to, I want to get, I want to not take your belt, but, but you, I wanna, you want that notch on your belt. You want to exactly say like, yeah. like, Hey man, I'm really good. I just yeah. beat a brown or a black belt. Yeah. You know? Like, so yeah, I, I, I feel you, man. And that's why when you're at this level and you're going against guys who are white blue belts and are, and they're good. A lot of these guys are coming uh, off of uh, wrestling backgrounds. Oh yeah. We have crazy. some guys, man, that their wrestling is, is off the chain. Well, we have a tough Academy. I mean, there's oh, no, absolutely. No, you know, I mean, that, that's no, there's no doubt about it. You know, and for me, it's kind of like this. It's like, you know, I always joke with people. I say, Hey, you know, you're expected to tap me out you know, you're expected yeah. to get the best of me physically, you know, maybe technically and maybe knowledge wise, I can get better of you. But anytime I tap them, I was like, Hey, your dad just tapped you out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, so like but it's true you know but like there's I mean, like you know the guys that are down here at tillis are really great and the other guys that i roll with over with um you know jason eisner and his guys right. um they're really respectful to me you know I, I i they do like 10 to 12 rounds 10 to 12 three to five minute rounds yeah and probably about six or seven maybe eight then i'm out you know i mean doing that and i get the best you know i, I get the best workout that i can but i also have to recognize when my body starts hurting that I can't train into pain. You know, I had a good friend, his name is uh, Dr. Mark Chang, and he's a real functional, um, uh, functional medicine. Um, he's actually one of the, you know, Pavel with uh, the kettlebells. He's one of that guy's first, like, disciples or pupils, whatever can. And he's the one who actually told me, he's like, don't train into pain. Don't try and work your way through it. Listen to your body as you get older. You know, you, you'll appreciate what I'm saying as you get older, and you respect that. And he's absolutely right, because... If I feel my side is hurting, I mean, like, if there's a difference between pain and being sore. Yeah. I mean, and so you got to learn the difference of that. But I think for me, it's like I just kind of respect my body. And if it's great, then I can go the next day. Like, you know, the jujitsu will always be there. I can always right. go. And if I can't do eight, nine rounds today, I can do eight, nine rounds tomorrow if I listen to my body correctly. But once you start doing that and once you start not listening to your body, you're going to feel the effects later on. And if you look at a lot of the older black belts, especially some of the really senior Brazilian guys who just put their, just murdered their body. I mean, look at their hands, look at their feet. I mean, the arthritis really must suck. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? So, um, but you know, for me now, I've learned to listen to it and it's also helped me. It's also helped me, you know, train smarter. It's helped me train longer. Um, and going back again is jujitsu for me, going back to Christianity, it's like going to church. Right. right. And so you got to keep going if you want to get better. And I'm not, you know, there are people who say, oh, you don't have to go to church to be a Christian. That's absolutely true. But for me, it's kind of like, you know, that says in the Bible, that, you know, be around the body, be around people who edify you. Yeah. Because is it though? Because I mean, the Bible 
commands us, I guess, for lack of a better phrase, but to have fellowship with one Correct. another. Correct. So if you're not going to church and you're just doing it on your own, you're an island on, amongst yourselves. Dude, it's like, you know, like the Bible says that Satan is like a lion, you know, roaring lion seeking who he may, may devour, are, yeah. right? And if you think about it, like like the body, body of Christ or your church is a herd, you know, and so there's safety in herd, right? right? There's safety in the herd. But once you start having people who are going outside of the herd, these outliers, these sick and injured ones, they would say it's going to pick you off. You know yeah. what I mean? You got to be really strong. And, you know, like you said, no man is an island. But for me, it's kind of like if you if you ever see, um, you know, these nature documentaries, I really love them. It's, but you talk about a musk ox, right? And musk ox, I don't know if you've ever seen it, but they have these big old horns right in front. And what they do is then anytime danger comes around, a polar bear or wolves or anything, they form this circle. Hmm. And all the, the backs of the, all the adults are to each other. Right. And the injured ones, the older ones are in the middle of the herd. And so all that 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 polar bear or those wolves see is just a, you know, a wall of horns. They can't get through it. Right. And it's kind of like the same way, you know, me. I think especially for me, you know, one of my I think my calling or, you know, something that the Lord has put on my heart is always to to minister to men, you right. know, minister to men. I did. You know, I uh, I uh, kind of grew up with with my father was alive, you know, but he really wasn't present in my life. They were. My mom and dad were separated when I was like two or three. I don't even remember when it was, but I didn't grow up with that guy in the house. Right. And so for me, I think that a lot of issues that we have nowadays are really actually is a father of society. Absolutely. And I think that church is a way to bring those men back into the fold and really teach them how to be men, teach them how to be godly men. And trust me, because everything in about us, everything, every knee, every fiber of my body screams out against, you know, against God. We're right. sinful by nature. And so for me, where I discovered is, you know, that's another thing too, is like it's been uh, pretty much almost, I think just a little over a year or maybe a little under a year around there um, that we've seriously committed to going to church. I mean, we said, you know, no matter what, um, if it's if it's raining, if it's pouring, if it's sunshine, if it's not, if, you know, whatever it may be, we're going to commit to going. And and I think, you know, there's there were times that I don't even know what happened, but like we were like, no, I'm not going to go. It's like, oh, no, Joey's like, you were going. We're going, okay, right. cool. We're going to get going. And when she hasn't felt like going, I have. When I haven't felt like going, she has. You know what I mean? So, or vice versa. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, um, absolutely. But, you know, also one thing too is my son. I want to get, I grew up in the church and I know that there are like four households in Pasadena that I can walk in there, walk into the back door and plop my butt down and make myself a sandwich and they wouldn't <laughs> say anything, you know, but it's all because of that. You know, my, my tias, you know, whatever, my tias, like, you know, I say it with air quotes, but my aunties that I grew up with in church, um, you know, they still call me to this day and they're praying for me. Godly women, man, that I've really been on. And there's been some really instru instrumental men in my life that have come through my relationship actually with God in church. And so those are the guys who kind of took that place. In fact, you know, my natural father actually died when I was in my late teens. And um, oh, I through, didn't know that. Yeah, he died. He died. So I, I know during the pandemic, I thought you're father passed during the pandemic well see that's the thing too that my dad did die right there so there's i have i i've been very blessed in my life and i tell you it's kind of weird but it's very unique and very god um i think god given that i was able to have two fathers i had a natural father and then i had another guy who was like my spiritual father and that that relationship actually kind of developed into just father son yeah and it's really weird because he's, he's like this tall you know, uh, six four, six two, white guy with a southern twang and white hair. How y'all doing? You know, what I mean, it's, but you know, he started calling me his son, and he was a very, very godly man. You know, he, you know, he he passed unfortunately because of COVID. He he got sick and he died. Um, and that in itself was like, you know, it like even right now when I'm talking about it, it's it's hard not to get choked up because sure. this man uh, meant so much to me in life. In fact, you know, with all the stuff going on in my life right now, I was laying in bed the other day and I told my wife, I was like, man, I wish I could call my dad. She said, well, you can still talk to him. I said, yeah, I, I can, you know, I mean, but it's not that back and forth. It's not, not the same, but it's really kind of, you know, what I discovered too. And well, actually, let me kind of tell you how I got the relationship before we move on. With yeah, my, my I'm dad. interested to know. So like how you met. The, oh, well, so, come about. so he's, uh, he was, a uh, um, one of the, um, the, what do you say, uh, deacons in my church. And we all went to this conference, um, uh, back in like this, this conference out of state, and there were four of us kind of sharing a room. You know, you got three college guys and this guy, other guy uh, sharing a room. And we came back after, you know, all said and done with one of the conferences. And they started, talk, started talking about who they wanted their wives to be. You know, I want this for my wife. I want that for my wife, blah, 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 right? You know, I want my wife to cook. I want my wife this, you know, like then. And then one of the things that came up with is like, hey, I want my wife to be a virgin. 
And I said, I said, really? I said wow, it's a unicorn, right? <laughs> yeah. And I said, yeah. well, you know, they were really adamant about it. You know, these also, uh, you know, probably a little bit more of their culture, you know, um, but they were, I said, culture or well, I think that, I, I, I think every man wants that. In a well, way. I think they do. I mean, you know, that, that, because that's natural. That's kind of the way we yeah, are. It doesn't absolutely. make it right. But I mean, it's kind of like, well, the point is like they, I said, well, are you a virgin? And they said, well, no. I said, well, then how can you require a gift from your wife that you can't give her? Well, it's different, you know, cause we're guys. I'm all, dude, that's trash, man. You know, you gotta really step back and look at yourself and then look, see how dumb you sound. So we kind of, you know, argued about it for, you know, a good hour or whatever it may be. And then uh, we all went to sleep. So the next day, um, the next day, uh, Pastor David, you know, he was named, no, Dr. David DeBoard. He came to me. He says, hey, can I talk to you for a second? I said, sure. And he said, listen, man, I really appreciate the way you kind of stuck to your guns. That You know, I agree with what you said. I just kind of step back and let you guys kind of do your thing and, you know, you know, banter back and forth and but I really admire what you said and how you stuck to your guns. I said, oh, thanks. He says, I want to let you know that if you ever need anything from me, you know, you know, let me know. And, you know, this is really cool because this is a high-level guy in my church, and he's really well-known. He was a pastor. I mean, excuse me, uh, he was a former pastor, but he was one of the deacons at our church, and he's also uh, a teacher, a professor for a theological seminary. So this guy had, you know, he, he, um, he was uh, with Chuck Craft and, you know, kind of the guys in the spiritual healing and all that stuff, and I was like, wow, this guy's really cool. And I, you know, I had talked to him before. I knew his wife. I knew his daughter. And I was like, wow, you know, this is really cool. And so probably a couple weeks after that, I said, you know, I really need him. I, 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 I kind of took him up on his offer. So I went over there and I talked to him after church and said, hey, I, you know, I know you told me this, but I, re I need a mentor. I need somebody to show me, like, how to be a man. I know how to be a male, but I don't know how to be a man. I mean, I didn't have that, you know, in my life. And he goes, okay, well, you know what, tell you what, let me pray about it and let me go from there. And as I was okay. So he comes back to me a few weeks later, you know, maybe one or two Sundays after that. He's like, well, you know what, listen, I prayed about it and I spoke to my family. And he says, I can't take you on as a mentor. -y. And I was like, oh, man, that sucks, dude, you know. But he says, but I can do this is I want you to come and I want you to spend time with my family. I want you to like be around the house. I want you to come over on a like a, a random day. You know, I want to come and have dinner with us. And he says, I believe that you'll grow into the man that you should be by seeing how we act. Right. And I was like, wow, that's pretty prof profound. I wouldn't thought about it. I would have thought like, hey, remember, we're going to have like one-on-ones and some yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> goodwill hunting kind of moment, right? You know, yeah. um, but he was absolutely right. And so, you know, I grew with his family. I grew up, you know, I, I aged and, you know, I, I lived life with his family. And then eventually, you know, him, me and his daughter became really, really close. I mean, honestly we became like brother and sister i mean that tight and you know she lived with me I, she unfortunately she passed um but you know when she died it was like you know somebody ripped out my right side it was really really i mean we were that close and it's kind of funny because um after that he adopted two babies from china um you know those are my little sisters he adopted esther and hannah and uh, you know their esther was newborn and then hannah i think she came home at um probably like one or maybe two years old but that's all they have ever known. They've only ever known me in their life, and they don't know life without me, you know, and so it was really cool. And then so, you know, like I said, you know, my dad passed, but that was kind of how we grew. And he was such a spiritual powerhouse in my life. And But I also kind of got convicted because I realized that in my life, I was leaning on him, but not leaning on God, if that makes any sense. I would turn to him for advice. I would instead of getting on my knees or instead of getting in the word like I should, I would be like, oh man, I got to call my dad. You know, instead of having him as like, uh, you know, an extra battery pack, he was the person I would turn to. And I looked in my life too and I, I did the same thing with my mom. My mom was, she's an incredible woman of God. I would not be where I am right now without in Christ or in my walk without my mother. I mean, she's amazing. And so, you know, but again, it wasn't, I wasn't um, connecting to God. I was connecting to them. And I had to look, and especially through all this stuff of being laid off and, um, dude, it's been hard. It's been really, really bad, but I've grown in my faith. I've grown in like having to trust God. There's a difference between when you trust God just because and having to trust God, because I think it, you know, it, it, there, it, it brings about a different kind of faith when you say, listen, I'm at the end of myself, father, I can't do anything else. I've done all I can for me. And you know, that's it. And you learn to for to, to trust God. You almost forced to trust God. You know, the other day somebody told me, somebody told me, Hey, you know, are you trusting God? I said, that's all I can do. <laughs> you know what I mean, where I'm at right now. Um, but that was an amazing thing. And for me, 
you know, my little brother, actually, he's my half brother, but he's, he's my brother. Um, but he's had the same thing. You know, his mom got remarried and he's had, he had a second dad. So we always joke about, well, which, which dad are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> OG dad or the you know, second dad? But, but we, you know, we were very, very blessed in our lives. And that, you know, I, I praise God because I would not be again where I'm at without having him there. And so, you know, for me, um, when I was at uh, Harvest Rock with Che and I was one of his uh, pastoral interns, I started this group called Firestarters. And it was really cool because there was like, I think six of us and they grew to like 10, but it, we kept it small, but we kept it small on purpose because we wanted that intimacy. You know, there were guys who wanted to join. We kind of kept it quiet because you don't really want to hurt anybody's feelings. It's not like, you know, recreational, but, but seriously, it was serious about like really following God. And we did that and it was called a fire starter because if you think about it, if you've ever seen like the guys who like smoke jumpers, right? What do they do? They light back fires, right? They light fires everywhere. And that's kind of how they spread a fire. And they, yeah, they put out the other fire kind of. Um, but the thing about that, it was we were, we were going to do that. We were going to get it so on fire that we were going to branch out and we're all going to do our thing. Mm. We're all going to go on to different levels of ministry. And that's when I was originally going to go into ministry and, um, and, you know, start fires and start the spiritual fire for people. Well, that, that actually makes perfect sense because, mm. you know, when Jesus was walking the earth, he didn't go around trying to work with a bunch of people. He worked with his 12. Right. And he was going to build his church with 12. Right. That's you it. Know, and he was going to use those to go out and, and double and double and, you know. Right. And, and two he, friends and so on and so yeah, on. He didn't so try on. to change everyone himself. No. He, just, he, he worked on those select. Right. He was God, but, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he yeah. needs some help. <laughs> exactly. If God needed help, why don't we? You know right. what I mean? So, yeah. But, um, you know, that was kind of thing. And so that's always been be, that's always been something that's been on my heart because i recognize that you know uh a lot of times that we don't know how to be society is so messed up when it comes to guys i mean i think it's messed up when it comes to everything but i think that for us we don't really have those kind of godly um examples in our lives unless, unless our father was a you know straight up christian and walking with us. but how many of us can really say that not um, many. Yeah, I, mean, I sure not, didn't. Yeah, me either. I mean, you know, my father, I was very fortunate because my father later on in life gave his uh, life to Christ. But I grew up with a very, you know, I grew up with a lot, a lot, a lot of pain, a lot of, uh, a lot of bad things in my life. And I always tell my mom, it's like, it's a miracle that I'm alive. I mean, I put myself in so many stupid situations. I've either been put in those situations or put myself in those situations. But, you know, the grave by the grace of God, I'm still here. You know, I'm in my 50s now. You know, married. I've been married for a long time. I have a son, beautiful son. Um, but I only have that because of him. Uh, no matter how many times that I've messed up, God has always been faithful. And so, you know, it's like, we're not faithful, but God is. But God is. Yeah, you know, and so, you know, there are some things that you say, it's like, you know, the repercussions of your actions may be, you know, little on. I can, you know, smoke for, you know, 20 something years and that's my fault. You know, I mean, it's not God's fault. God's faithful. God's always but, faithful. But God's still right there. He sure is. He sure He's is. So, yeah, he, he sure is. doesn't abandon. 100%. That's something I've been thinking about a lot. And uh, because... A lot of times when we sin or, we, or when we're in a place where we know we've done wrong or, or that we're whatever it is, a lot of times we pull away mm -hmm. and they think, and we have this idea in our minds that I'm not worthy of God right now. Cause yeah, like, that's a lie, man. It's a lie. That's a lie. And people, so I hear it all the time from people in other situations where like, yeah, I want to go to church, but you know, I got to stop doing this first. I got to stop doing Back. that first. Like, come no, as you are. You come as you are, come man. You, are. you know, when, when I, I've told this story before on my podcast. No one ever watches them. But so I'll just gonna watch now. I'm on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but when I first started going to church, man, I mean, I would go hungover. I would get high smoking weed before I went. Mm -hmm. I would I would vape in the restroom because I couldn't go a whole service without wow. vaping my tobacco, um, you know, my vape pen. And this right. is only a, this is only a little over a year ago. Wow. You know, I mean, yeah, I was already a in jujitsu and practitioner and all that, but I but people didn't know. Most people probably didn't know or didn't let on that they knew that I was in this period where. Right. You know, I was really, you know, not doing well. Right. And I just kept going because I liked it. And uh, Well, it's minister to you, man. There was something that you found. You know, we have a lot of people that, I think that's a problem nowadays because a lot of people say, well, you know, I can't go. It's like it's like going to jiu-jitsu, right? Let's let's do another parallel with jiu-jitsu. Yeah, oh, well, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work out and I'm going to lose some weight before I go. I said, yeah, it's not the same. It's not the same. It's not the same. Oh, you you got to get it there. You got to get it there. And a jiu-jitsu workout is a jiu-jitsu workout. And same thing with spiritual. You know, you come as you are. And they say, well, you know, Christ accepts me for how, how I am. Yeah. That's true to a certain point. But, you know, you just like, you get in there and you're like, God changed you. You don't need to be, you know, still con uh, living in sin. 
You know, right. when you get that, then you also agree, listen, I'm going to change my life. The same thing with going to jiu-jitsu. You understand that you're going to have to change your life in order to be successful at the yeah. sport. Amen. Well, what I would do, I was like, you know, God, uh, I'm going to draw near to you. And I know you'll be, I, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that you're going to be faithful to your word and you're going to draw near to me. Right. When I was, my, me stepping near him was just getting in the church. Wow. Like, and, and I'm telling you after only, not even a year, I don't know how he did it because I've been trying to do it for 25 years. Wow. to kick the sauce and to get right. off of the drugs and everything. Right. I've been doing it for so long since right. I was, since I was 15, 14, 15 years old, uh -huh. never, just never could stop. And he, within a year, not even a year, I don't touch the stuff. That's I don't great. want the stuff. Yeah. I, I don't need it. Yeah, that's and, and when I was going, I was, I was, man, I was, yeah. you man, I was getting high before going to church. You yeah. know, I was smoking in the church bathroom, <laughs> not weed, but you know, the vape. Did you pass that stuff or what? No, <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I was hiding it. You know, I, was, uh, I didn't want anybody to know I was in the stall, just taking yeah. a few puffs, you know? And, um, well, see, so, you know, they, they, they talked about this actually, Pastor Michael talked about this today. It's like, listen, you know, you have something inside you that, you're going to always try and fill. You really are. And, you know, and we fill it through different. We fill it through, you know, food. We fill it through yeah. alcohol. We fill it through sex. We have, you know, pornography. Um, you know, whatever may, whatever your, your God is, you're going to try and fill that space. But that we're made with something. We're made with a key, you know, like a, a key lock or whatever you call it. You know, not you do to a key lock. No, no, no. Oh, okay. that. Hey, ease up. Don't get up. <laughs> I know. Uh, but, you know, you. <laughs> right. Exactly. Um, but, you know, the thing about it, we, we're made with this, this, you know, lock that only Jesus Christ's key can fill, you know, and that's the only thing that really fills us. And we have to battle daily against that, man. It's not like a symptom. It's like, oh, God, I'm so filled forever life. You know what I mean? Dude, it's daily, man. I know it's for daily. me, it's a struggle daily just to maintain my life. But Every you know day. what? Greater is he that is in me that is he that is in the world. Mm -hmm. And I say that because it's like, you know, training myself. It's like when, you know, when Christ was in the, in the desert with Satan being tempted, Satan, what did he do? He, you know, he quoted the word, right? And that's right. it. You got to think about that. People so undervalue the, the, the word. Um, something today is like our, our pastor encouraged us. Pastor Michael says, hey, son, I want to encourage you guys to bring your Bible. You know, I want us in the Bible. I want us going through that. You know, we're going to teach you how to feed yourself. There's a Zen parable that says, um, you know, if you give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. But if you teach a man the fish, you feed him for a lifetime. When our pastors and our, you know, teachers and all this stuff, when they teach us how to feed ourselves as far as spiritually, they know that, you know, that we can get up in the morning when nobody's there. It's just you and God. And you go to your Bible and you just get in, you know, Proverbs. Uh, my aunt Yol, she, you know, one day she says, you know, if you ha if you want to learn to read the Bible, just do Proverbs, do one a day. Yeah. And it's because like there's 31 of them. There's Proverbs 31. You know, she could one one chapter a day, and that really changed a lot of stuff for me. It kind of taught me. Now I grew up in the Bible. I grew up knowing all this stuff, but I never put it in the practice. You know, I really didn't. I really wasn't. I didn't really study. There was a time that you know I was really when I think when I, when I probably uh, when I recommitted my life to God, probably around like 92. Um, for the, I don't know how many nth time, right? <laughs> right. You know what I mean? And, <laughs> and what I did is, you know, I, I was really in the Bible, but I, you know, I was always, like you said, I could never kind of stop on my own. Um, and all these things were coming by. You know why? Because I removed myself from all that. I removed myself from church. I removed myself from, from um, reading the word. I removed myself from prayer. And did, boom, Satan right there, that roaring lion, boom, right, came in right in. And I gave him opportunity. I opened the doors myself. I mean, we're willing and free spirits. I did it to myself. You know what I mean? But like now it's like, it's, it's a different story. And I'm really, it's just every day, you know, I really, really try and follow what I need to. Um, and I don't do it every day. You know, we fall constantly. Right. You know, the Bible says a righteous man, a righteous man falls seven times. Right. Mm -hmm. um, how much I'm not righteous. I mean, no way, you know, might be a little self-righteous, but, right. <laughs> but you know, like the thing is I got to remind myself too, and I got to get up. And again, another parallel with jujitsu you go in and you get wrecked on the mat. I mean, I'm sure you've had bad days and good days on the jiu-jitsu mat, you know, and it's always there. But what happens? If you want to progress, you've got to go back. And it and it it hurts your ego. I mean, you're Latino, I'm Latino. We're, you know, we're our, our, our cultures are known for being, you know, macho, you know, and yeah. ego, egotistic and, you know, that kind of stuff. But you got to humble yourself. Um, I have this thing I always tell, hey, you know, tapping is my best move. That's why I mastered that, you know, and so, you know, especially now for me too, being a little older, you know, the most practitioners is that I have to understand my limitations and I also have to accept my age and I have to understand that, listen, there's a certain way that I got to do things. 
And it's also the same way of understanding my weaknesses when going out in the world. I got to understand that I can't be around that kind of stuff. And we talked about my gateway beer, right? Right. I, I, for right now, I can't do that because it's only been 70 days. Maybe later on, you know, down the road. I mean, I have, you know, just being in the business that I was, I have a big old cellar of wine and some really, really great bottles. And I was like, well, what do I do with those? Do I sell them? Do I get rid of them? Do I don't? It's like, oh, you know what? I tell you what, I'm just going to wait. Maybe, maybe you're down. I can have a celebratory glass of wine or whatever it may be. But for right now, I just got to be sold out. I got to be 100% all in. And for me, it's just kind of like that temptation. It's like, well, I'm sure you've had weeks that you've missed jujitsu, like, and it, you know, you go back, and it's really tough to go back, right? And it, it's kind of the same way. But just come as you are. Just go back. It's gonna, it's gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt. You're gonna get wrecked. You're gonna be gassed. And sometimes when you go back to church, uh, it's like, oh, you might feel self convicted. You might, but you know what, dude? Just come as you are. And Christ accepts you. And let the Holy Spirit change you. That doesn't mean that you can keep sinning. That you know, I mean, obviously we're all sinners. We're all saved by grace. But you know, Christ asked for us. He de- he asked for obedience, not sacrifice. Yeah, he you wants know? you to be holy. Exactly. And how do you get that? Just one day at a time. You just you know, just keep washing. When I was you know really. I think it was in service uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I kind of really had this image of my life, you know, kind of just sitting there and just um, just with all kinds of gook on me, all kinds of like sewer and like stuff like that on me, but my, sh- my head and my shoulders were clean, but still like my chest and my waist area and all that stuff, I still had a bunch of stuff on me, you know, and I said, I am not finished yet. You know, that's what I was getting from God. It's like, I'm not finished with you yet. You got a lot more thing. And it kind of sucks because, you know, being... Uh, being sanctified, I guess you could say, sanctified by Christ, it's not an easy process because everything in my body, everything that I am, everything that Justin is, screams out against the holiness of God because I'm sinful by nature, and that I have to understand that. And I think that once you understand that, it's a lot easier to kind of start walking with God and say, hey, listen, that's it. But, you know, going back to how it is, you know, you go back and, you know, you and I met because of jiu-jitsu. You know, there are time, times that we just talked on that. You know, we just talked on the mat about stuff. You know, it helped me, and there's times that we, you know, I've talked to, you know, other people on the mat, you know, jujitsu is crazy. It's like, you see, you see somebody with a jujitsu shirt, and say, hey, you roll, you roll, oh, hey, roll, yeah, what do you roll? You know, it's, things, it's, yeah. it's like that body. It's a, kind of the same thing when you see somebody, and sometimes with, you know, Christian emblems, or say, hey, are you, you know, Christian? Oh, yeah, oh, me yeah. too. Where like you when I, the hat, I told you I lost yesterday, I was yeah. in a church on it. Uh-huh. It's a very popular church, so. Uh-huh. It's always people, oh, you go to whack, Like, yeah, and oh, then I'll just start it right up. See, that's great. You know, interesting thing, uh, when when I, yeah, we did meet at jujitsu, and I remember you had brought up Jesus once, like, mm-hmm. very casually, and people don't realize how, prof- how, how impactful a small mention of Jesus can be. Yeah, totally, bro. Because it wasn't, like, until years later that I, I remember I asked you one day at an open mat, I asked you about church. Mm. I was just interested, you know, I was, I was like, what do you call that, uh, when you're... When you're, you're looking into something, you're seeking. You're 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 curious. Yeah, you're curious. I was, I was church curious. Yeah, and um, but it's it's so impactful when when you just open your mouth and just say a little something. Yeah, and uh, well, you know that's timing, dude. It, it, you know, just like every going back jujitsu, it's timing, right? Yeah, spirituality and that spirit, not spirituality. That's actually I shouldn't say that, but um, I think that that that's God. You know, planting those seeds. You know, and we got to talk about, you know, there's people who plant the seeds, people who water the seeds, and people who harvest the fruit. Exactly. Right. You know, so, right. and that's about it. And, you know. Yeah, because it's not like you you didn't bring me to church. Mm-mm. But there is definitely a seed was planted. Right. And then someone else came along and, and, then, and, then, and then someone else came along who eventually invites you to church. And then yeah, it right. kind of works itself. Right. right. Well, God puts you like that. You know, one thing I've learned to do lately is, um, you know, pray with pray with people. And that I was always, always kind of afraid. I always kind of heard that, um, you know, because you never know how people are going to react. And today people are so like, oh, well, I can't pray. But, you know, you can't. It's like, but, you know, I think when you bring it about it, when you kind of talk to people, hey, man, you know, listen, I noticed you said this. Would you mind if I pray with you? And some people, a lot of people will tell you. Some, yeah. It depends on where they are with, right. their, with their walk. Because I remember uh, we were having a long conversation. You were helping me out with some stuff about, I don't know, a few months ago. Mm-hmm. And then I was in my car talking to you for like an hour. Right. And then you asked if we could pray, and it was the most natural thing. Yeah, it just flows, know? right? It, it, it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was just so natural because I had been going to church for such a long time, right. a while already, and I was already like, I'm already gun ho on fire, and you know, just it, it didn't like make me feel awkward or anything. Just right. two grown men praying with each other, you know, didn't that's cool, feel dude. awkward at all. Praise God, dude. And I think that it just kind of depends. Where you are, right? You know, if you ask a guy who has doesn't go to church, that's gonna be a little awkward. It yeah. actually sometimes is, but you know what? Sometimes people recognize that you're doing it because you care about them, and I think when it's brought about in love, you know, there are the. I think 
<laughs> what I, don't know. I don't know because I kind of felt like that's happening before. Right? I just thought the guy was weird. You know? oh. See, well, that's okay. But you know what? If you still like, you still agree. You know, you're allowing somebody to pray for you. Also, have to be careful who prays for you. You know, oh, yeah. you, you have to be careful because you don't know what their what their walk is. Right. Um, but you know, for me, it's kind of like um, you know, one of the biggest turnoffs to Christianity are Christians themselves. Yeah, it absolutely. really is. And listen, I grew up in the church. Right. I've seen it all, bro. I mean, yeah. you know, but I tell people this: it's kind of like. Um, you know, don't focus on Christians, focus on God. Yeah. People are people, but God is God. Well, that's why I always try to make it very clear. And it's also the same reason why I've been able to do these podcasts and talk about something. Because in the beginning, I was like, I don't want to talk about Jesus because I'm so broken. Damn, that's I'm, okay, I'm, man. I'm so, I know that. That's what I'm getting to. <laughs> like, I was like, we'll man, get to it, bro. I'm so broken, <laughs> man. And I'm such a, I'm such a. Not a scumbag, but I mean, I, I'm I'm a sinner, man. Amen. And I was like, aren't we all? And I, and it, but it was the part of the lie that, right. that that the devil will tell you that no, man. You, but see, he wants you to be you? quiet. He wants you to be quiet. Dude. Absolutely. Yeah. He's like, who are you to right. tell other people? Blah blah. And so I, I realized, no, you know what, man? It's not about me and what I'm doing. It's not me having to be perfect. I don't have to be perfect because Jesus was perfect. That's right, bro. He's the one who died on the cross Amen. for me Amen. and you and Amen. everybody else. Like, I don't have to be. He 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 sat and ate with the sinners. Yeah. He, he came to save not the right. He didn't come for the righteous who were right. got everything perfect. Pharisees, right? But he came for the broken, like right. the people who need him. Right. Like those well, people, and I'm one of those people. Yeah. You know, and and I've had such a my life is not unique in the sense like like you know I, I didn't grow up poor. You know, I I I I'm somebody you could say grew up with a silver spoon in their mouth. Right. I don't have that story where I come from rags to this. Mm -hmm. Like I'm a guy who who had everything. And threw it all away, and 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 didn't value anything in life because everything was yeah. everything was just yeah, uh -huh. everything was just given to me. Wow! And you and didn't have to work for it. Huh? I didn't have to work for anything, man. Uh, it's, but but that's a different kind of problem. Yeah, you know, it's a kind of problem where like no one looks at that guy and says, "Oh, look at all he overcame." Yeah. No, it, it's but it's a it's, different it's, kind it's of struggle. Dude. It is a different yeah. kind of struggle. It took it, me a long time it, to. Yeah. Took me a long struggle time. Struggle is struggle, dude. Struggle is struggle, absolutely. And, and I started to realize that right. you know, struggle is struggle. And uh, you put me off my point because you, you keep you keep interrupting me. <laughs> I, no, it's <laughs> commenting. Kidding. I know this is a banter. But but uh, but I don't have to to worry about me being perfect mm -hmm. to be able to want to amplify ex exemplify and, and what's that word when you want to make something loud? Amplify. amplify to amplify God because I I could still you know mentor or help people come out of whatever it is they're coming out of. I came out of dark places. Right. Even though I didn't have all these, like, I don't have this type of story that's usually the typical story, but I've come out of some dark places, and, and those dark places that I came out of were all by God. None of it was me. Like, right. that's the cool part about it. I didn't have to uh, do anything or, or, or be the one. As soon as I realized I didn't have to be that, right. that God, I just had to allow God to be God and, and Jesus and, and just amplify right. what Jesus did for me that I'm able to even try to figure out and develop my story. Yeah. Because I, 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 I think what you're getting at is that you want to mentor other men. Like there's a, there's a problem that you recognize oh, completely, bro. in society right 100%. now of, uh, I, I, whether you want to call it weak men or lost men or men who Everything, have man. don't have any hope. Everything. Like, exactly. And so I think you and I were, were thinking the same thing. Right. This is the reason why I started this podcast is because I started to recognize that I was this weak man. I never wanted to accept that I was weak. And it wasn't until it wasn't until I met my wife that I realized how weak I was. <laughs> Do you be, well? Well, I mean, you know, she made it clear. <laughs> she made it very clear to me. Wow. And 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 I realized over time I was like, man, she's right. We, we got a society of broken men. I thought it was just me, but it's not just me. It's, it's, it, I always thought I was the guy who like just didn't fit in. Like at jujitsu at, at where we go, Tillis, uh, MMA. I've, I never fat in, fit in. I still kind of don't. People might think I do, but I don't. I, I feel so, I remember starting there and I felt so alone in, at that place. It, it took years. You were the first friend I made there, man. Yeah, wow. And we didn't even really become friends till years after I started. Yeah, that's crazy. And but I just kept going because it was. Well, you're a great trading partner. That's why I do. I know. Yeah, I love trade. I love rolling with you, dude. I wish I wasn't so good. And yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, do they have a disclaimer on this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, just kidding. No, but you. Uh, it's great. It's amazing to see you. You know, actually 
you progress in, not only in jujitsu, but also in your work with Christ. I mean, yeah, and I, I got to tell you, you know, when it comes to who we are and us wanting to be quiet or we should kind of feel it, dude, that's a lie. That's totally. a lie, man. You know, that's that's kind of Satan just saying, hey, man, you're not good enough. You're not that. And you know, talked about weak being weak. Yeah. It's the that's same thing when you do something wrong. Like, say, say something doesn't work out in your marriage mm -hmm. and your marriage breaks apart. And, the, and right away, the devil is going to tell you, dude, you totally, God hates divorce. You totally messed up. God, like, don't even go to church anymore. Like, you're a fraud. It's a lie. It's a you're lie. a fraud. You're a fake. You're this. You're that. Yeah. And, and, and that's a lie. Oh, it's a total lie. God, there's yeah. nothing. God is, God's word is faithful. Yeah. He loves you. He, what more? We had a great message at church today. Like, what more can he do to show you that he loves right. you? He died on the cross. He sent right. his son to die on the cross for you, man. Right. What more can he do right. to show you that his love is unwavering? Yeah. It's you who has the problem. It's That's you true. who keeps leaving That's and true. taking off. But you don't have to. And, and I'm so glad that I'm so strong in my faith right now. And, and, and I don't mean to be cocky. I'm, I'm just because I'm always on my guard because the devil, he's been doing this a long time. But I feel so comforted in this particular moment in my life because I'm totally sold out that God is faithful and that he loves me. Right, he does. Well, you know, it's also said, the Bible says that Satan is the accuser of the brethren, right? Mm -hmm. That's what it says. And Satan will always be there, always be going to be there. It's daily stuff. You know, we're not going to get a break. Mm -hmm. We're not. We're not. But it says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And we got to continually remind ourselves. we got to quote the word to ourselves. we got to read the word and quote it and actually live by it, you know, you know, um, this world sucks. It really does. It does. But this is the worst. If you think about it, this is the worst it's ever going to be for us in our lives. Hmm. And I, I heard that the other day, and I was like, wow, that's pretty profound. This is the closest to hell that we'll ever experience. You know, because after we close our eyes and we open it on the other side, I mean, that's it. No more. Some, some people are experiencing a worse earth than, than others. That's true. That's true. But that's the worst they're ever going to have it. The worst, yeah. That worst they're ever going to have it. But, you know, what I'm going to tell you is like going back to everything, it's like, listen, our world is where we're at because of men, because of the decisions that they've made, because of whatever it may be. But when we strengthen, man, think about it like, you know, David, right? Look at how many times that David sinned. Many. I mean, <laughs> yeah, right? But God said that David was a man after his own heart. But David was a tender warrior. I mean, he's a badass, right? He's a badass. Look yeah. at all the stuff that he did through his life. But still, he, but he also did some pretty messed he up sure stuff. Did. He sure did. He sure did. But this would be an example about real human behavior and we should take it and we, should, we shouldn't take it as a uh, as like you know right to do whatever we want like you know this kind of thing it says well okay well look david did i did it too so hey and i mean it's not like that but we take it as an example of like hey listen david fell i've fallen i'm not gonna i'm gonna get right back up i'm gonna repent i'm gonna try and get out of that behavior whatever it may be you, know, you gotta try you really do you can't yeah. you know there's a lot of things that well, God loves me for who I am. And I think that God understands me. It's like, that's not what the word says. Yeah. I mean, you know? Apostle Paul makes it very clear that although we're saved by grace, that it's not an excuse to go out and sin. Correct. And he, he, he's been very clear on that. Yeah. Well, a lot of people need to realize that. But, you know, listen, going back in the thing about, about men, right? Men, yep. we need to, there needs to be, I, I was at, uh, I think it was in February, yeah, probably February, I went there. I went to um, my old church, CA, Christian Assembly in Eagle Rock. And they have this thing called the men's gathering, right? And there were 400 guys there, 400 guys there praising God, just talking to each other, just doing that, listening to the word, taking that. And they did talk about some real stuff sometimes. I love that guy, that, love that men's ministry there. But they say, listen, if you're just a Christian, if you're not a Christian, just come. Yep. You know, come there. And if you don't have this at your church, then take it back. Listen, if you're not a member of any church, join our church. Hey, we'd love to have you. We have this great thing. But if you are a member of another church, take what we're doing and go back there and create your own. That's very important because uh, at my church, we've had a men, we had a men's day, you know, and we've had a, I've been to a couple now and this is not to knock my church or anything like that. I have a great, I go to a great church. Mm -hmm. it, it, it has done amazing things and I love being there. You know, I was there all day. Uh, that being said, we, we've had uh, men's nights, mm -hmm. you know, like a barbecue type thing. And we'll have like 200 men there, mm -hmm. you know, and before the thing's over, we have men trickling out, and it bothered me. It's been, it bothered me the first time, and it bothered me the second time, and because I could see that that these men are hungry, like they're there, and they're they're looking for for something, and men, we need more of that stuff. Yeah, and so so the thing that I came up with was 
and because you, you, you already brought it up a couple of times about jujitsu being like church. Mm -hmm. So I've already had meetings with a, a, about four pastors now at four different churches to implement their own sports ministry program with jujitsu. Because when I, when I'm at Noah's man, like I see mom and dad and kids on the mat. Right. Uh -huh. I see women conjugating in circles, talking and drilling. Right. I see the men doing the same thing, uh, a place for people to conjugate, to have fellowship. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, man, like just like a, couple, a year ago or more, I was like, man, the only thing missing in this place is Jesus. Yeah. Like this true. is the only thing that's missing. And like when I coach at the UFC, I, I'll bring up Jesus here and there because a couple of my students are Christians, you oh, know, cool. and I'll bring it up. But I had a meeting with the sports minister, uh, the sports pastor at my church. Mm -hmm. And he's, he, he, he likes the idea. And I think that he, I don't, but I don't think he sees the, the actual value. I think he thinks it's a great idea. Right. He's not too sure about it, but uh, luckily some other practitioner friend of his told him, oh, that's a great idea. Oh, see, so it made him more interested than if it was just me coming uh -huh. at him. Got it. And I don't even really know that guy that well, but but I've been really persistent. Might, maybe too too persistent because I think, <laughs> oh, he's, no, I think call, he's kind of getting annoyed. Another call from Andreas. Well, yeah, yeah, that's straight pretty much where I got him now. Straight to voicemail. <laughs> yeah, straight to voicemail. You know, I'll text him, look at this, man, look at this. We've got 200 guys here. Right. These guys... See, the thing is, people like me, like if you're like if you're if you're anywhere near where I'm at right now, and where I'm at is I need to be at church, man. Right. Like I'm so broken, man. I'm my heart is so I go, I'm going through so much, especially right now, man, that I just want to be at church. I went to the morning, middle, and after the, the midday service because I'm so you're lost hungry. right now. Yeah. And I just feel like, man, I don't want to leave this place. You're hungry, man. I'm you hungry. feel that, that 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 ministers to you. And and so and so I'm like, man. People go to jujitsu. You know, people who train jujitsu. If you train jujitsu, you you know right. that if you could be there every day, you would. Yeah. And think about that, man. We could have people, men, going to church every single day on the mats because because we have a gym right. and we have an extra room that's pretty big. It's it's bigger than Noah's old one. It's just used for storage. Wow. And we had me and this pastor. We had to talk and everything. I was I was trying to sell him on the idea. Look, man, I know you don't know anything about wrestling. You're a basketball guy, but. Kids, the kids are playing basketball. You got for the for the men. You got maybe ten guys playing every few weeks or whatever at the gym. Yeah, like man, people when they train jujitsu, they train every day. Wasn't they there could. a Christian wrestling thing? That's something like that. Something like I, I forgot. I think I heard what about there has that. to be. And there, this there is was. not original. Someone's thought of this before. Yeah, but I, mean, I know but it. there's parallels. You know what I'm saying? Is like you can always bring that up to your pastor. Like, hey, by the way, this church did this, and this was a really great ministry. Right. So maybe we could do the same with the jujitsu. Well, well, you know what I did was I told him the story about uh, how. God, I know you. I know it, people interpret it either as an angel. It could be both angel or it was God. I mean, I've I've read literature about it, people debating about whether it was an angel or whether it was God wrestling with uh, Jacob in the desert. Angel. Yeah, I say it's God. <laughs> but I know angel. we differ. You but let me until I bless you, right? It's God. Yeah, yeah. And, and and the way I imagine that when I'm reading that story because I like to read it every once in a while, uh -huh. it's like Jacob's got God in a, in a, or the angel in a toehold, you know, and he's like uh -huh. he's like let my leg go. He's like let me go. Not until you tap. But there's passages in there. There's a couple that I've read already where the Bible's talking about wrestling. Mm. You know, where he's talking about. We do not wrestle with flesh and blood, but against principles. Exactly. And, power, yeah. and that's why I say, man, God's a wrestler. God, the Gracie family, I, I believe that they, God, like how God used the Jews to, with, trusted them with the word of God. Uh -huh. God entrusted the Gracies with the, with jujitsu. Well, jujitsu's made so many lives better, dude. That's like, <laughs> of course. Oh my God, dude. Of course, man. It's, it, yeah. it, it changes lives. It changed it's mine. Changed I'm sure it yours. Oh, 100%. And it's like, how, and so, so I really believe in this. Like, right. like before, when I was drinking every day, man, and getting high, I didn't have the courage or the wherewithal to go and speak to a person who had a type of status in society, right. like a pastor, and, and, and start trying to sell them on an idea. Because I had no faith in myself, right. I had nothing. But when God transformed me through the Holy Spirit, he gave me a confidence. It's kind of like why well, you don't trust fat trainers, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've done okay. <laughs> you're, just but, port, you're just portly. I'm a little portly. <laughs> but, but, but he gave me this confidence to go out and talk to people. I've met four. You know, I just, it's so, it was so crazy. I was like, all right, God, I'm getting the picture. You want me to bring this idea forth, bring this idea forth. And, and, I, and I, I just convinced myself that god's trying to work through me to get me to go and and spread this idea it, it may not be me who starts it maybe someone watching this will start one at their church right now naturally you know when i started thinking about it and talking about it, i was like 
this would be a great way for me to stay in jiu-jitsu, make some money, and, and, I'll, and bring people to Jesus. Like, right. what more could you want, Andres? Like, you could, you could take care of yourself and your family. You could, you could bring people to Christ and, and, and live a pretty good life, you know? I, I mean, s like, create value in right. my life. And then, of course, you doubt yourself because you're like, not doubt, your, not doubt myself, but you're like, yeah, but I, I don't deserve to be happy all the time and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, you know? it's, a lie, it's more lies, more lies, yes. But but one thing I've totally convinced myself of is that jujitsu in church, like actual church, mm -hmm. churches have a lot of rooms. They can dedicate a room. I went to my friend Luke, his church. He has a church down here. He's a junior pastor. I went there. We looked at different rooms. They have a bunch of rooms. I'm like, man, this one would work great. That one would work great. You know, we just, you guys, you know, well, you know, I got to get you with the board and blah, blah, blah. There's always a lot of hurdles. There are. There's a lot of red tape. There's a lot of red Li tape. Liability, dude. Insurance is a. Exactly. Is a, uh, exactly. There, right. There's a lot. But but I haven't given up on it. Yeah, you shouldn't. No, I, I don't think I will. Good. And so. Dude, think about one life, man. You know, they say that Christ leaves the 99 for one, right? Oh, yeah. And think about if if all this whole thing. Think about the guy who brought like, Greg Laurie to Christ. Mm. Right? Think about like that guy, right? He ministered to Greg Laurie. And now look at Greg Laurie's life. And look at how many people that. Greg Laurie, through one way or another, has led to Christ. I mean, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people, right? But it's all about that one person. And we, I think when we think about ministry, we think about, well, I'm going to bring these masses to Christ, you know, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help and, I, you know, I'm going to lead people to Christ. But sometimes it's just that one person. That one person. Yeah, that's all you do throughout your whole, like, life in That Christ. one influential person. That one. Like, imagine if you got a coach. Yeah. Or even, yeah. A, a you, coach who has... Hundreds of uh, right. uh, uh, practitioners right. under their jujitsu right. thing. No, yeah, and yeah. And, right. and, and then yeah, yeah, <laughs> and then and then and then you know I, I don't know anything about Noah and his in his faith. He's I, a Christian. Oh, great! Yeah, he's Fantastic. Christian. Yeah, I used to go to Cody Calvary. I know that he's. Oh, a, okay. I was encouraging him actually. He's he's you know he's a great young brother. You yeah. know, we have a very symbiotic relationship when I die. I won't spend as much time with him like as I used to yeah. just because of my schedule. But, you know, I mean, but, no, yeah. but people like him who are influential. Right. I don't know how he does it, but he is. Right. And, and, and he's what he's built there is beyond amazing. Uh, it really you know? is. And 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 he's so young. Yeah. You know, like like I'm, I, I am very I look up to the guy. I mean, the guy is 10 years, young, at least 10 years younger than me. And I'm yeah. looking up to him. You know? Yeah. And he, and so like. People who are influential like that, it just like you're saying, just takes one guy. Yeah. One guy that you can get who can who can just make the whole thing blow up. Yeah, or even or even not. I mean, even that one person that just is, you know, Joe Schmo, you know, or Joe, you, yeah. you know, whatever it may be. But I'm just talking about that one soul that you save, you know what I mean? Though you lead the Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, because a lot of people, you know, even throughout like this last uh whatever this year that I really really I'm like slowly, you know, changing my life and God's been, you know, really acting in my life. And committing, you know, I've been committing my ways to him, you know, just really like just getting rid of things little by little by little. Um, but has been that, um, you know, there are always going to be people. There's going to be detractors in your life. And they're always going to try and stop you or kind of, you know, try and push you away or kind of make, make fun of you. Yeah. There's always going to be obstacles in your life. But your thing is to like say, I want to share this with you. And I'm going to share this with you because I love you. Not because I'm being judgmental. Right. I want to share with you because, listen, I want you there. I want, to, I want us to hang out in heaven. I want to roll with you in heaven. You know what I mean? Yeah. I want to do that. You know what I mean? They think about it. You know, and, and it's those little things that you, you plan in people's life. And, you know, we're here, to show, we're here to show Christ, right? We're here to show the love of Christ. That doesn't mean we're pushovers. You know what I mean? Uh, going back to David, he was, he was a warrior, right? Yeah. A man after God's own heart. But I think that's another thing, too, is men, as Christian men, we need to be protectors of our families. We need to be protectors of our church. You know, there are, there. Are, I have, um, you know, different people, and I've grown up, like I said, I grew up in a church, and I have, still have a lot of church friends at different churches, and they have security now in today's thing, you know, and I think it was a problem back in the day because, well, you know, we, we need to kind of show love. It's like, yeah, you need to show love, but you also well, need you to protect, protect yourself. yourself. Yeah, right? Don't even our church has a couple of off-duty cops that yeah. are always there. Yeah, we have that too. We I mean, the, you wouldn't know it, yeah. but they are there. Well, we have security, actually. We have we have armed security now. We do, but yeah. but no, it's not it's not like something that's out in the open. Oh, ours is out in the They're undercover. Open. You yeah. wouldn't even, they don't tell you they're there, they, yeah. but, but I know because of people that I spoke yeah. to, oh, yeah, we have... We have a couple of off-duty yeah. Whittier cops that uh, you know that are there. Very cool. Yeah, we have actually both. We have actually armed security who are visible, mm. and then we have actually off-duty officers in in there. But that's and what it's come to now. It kept, yeah. But you know, I, I always tell them, you know, when I was when we were talking about originally doing this at church, I said, you know, we can take a big lesson from our um, you know Jewish brothers and sisters on the west side, 
And there's been document, I forgot one of the attacks that happened in last years, and they asked, well, why did you shoot up this synagogue and not that one? He said, well, that one has an armed guard. Mm. You know what I mean? And we got to be smart about it. We got to be, you know, just as the devil is. And there's no, it, it's a precaution. And nothing may ever happen. God, God, thank you, God, if nothing ever happens. But it's always that deterrent. And yeah. so that's the same thing. And it's the same thing with us being as men. We, gotta, we have to train. We have to be able to protect our families. We have to be able to protect our flock. One day, hopefully it never comes. Hopefully Christ will come back before it ever does. But, you know, we're going to have to protect ourselves. And I'm not going to stand down. You know, I'd rather, like I said, I'd rather go out, you know, guns ablazing than anything yeah, else. Absolutely. And so we need to also train men what it's like to be men. We need to go back. We need to go for so 100 per, like, you know, what a complete about face. Because I think that there's this misnomer that if you're a Christian man, you have to be some kind of, you know, pushover. Huh. You have to be this, some kind of like, you know, weak guy who's, oh, God bless you, you know. Or like, even worse, that you trick yourself into thinking you got to be perfect. Oh, well, and you don't to. want anybody to see how imperfect you are. No, so that's, like, that's a lie again. It's a lie, yeah. But, yeah. but all this stuff kind of, kind of rolls into the fact that what we're talking about is about a men's ministry about teaching men what it's really like to be Christian men. And we don't have that. A lot of times, actually, we, we have a lot more things, a lot more programs than there are, that are in, in action right now than were in the past. Because mm. when I grew up, there was all this stuff about, oh, we don't, we don't talk about that. We don't talk about this. But that's a lie, man. Yeah. Satan operates in the darkness. And when you shine the light of Christ on stuff like that, then he's not allowed to, to you know, uh, move as you should. You know, you shine the light on sins. There's a lot of stuff about being truthful, with guys, you know, we just started a men's group, um, and I don't think they had anything before, but I know that, you know, we just started a men's group, and it's just about, like, anywhere from 10 to 14 of us who come regularly, you know, and, and we talk about some real stuff. Yeah. I mean, guys get down, you know, guys get really honest, and there's that 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 camaraderie and that that trust and that um, honesty yeah. that really comes in. The, listen, bro, I'm struggling with, you know, alcoholism. I'm struggling with... Um, with uh, drug addiction, what you see on the outside is not what's on the inside. Uh, I'm struggling in my marriage. I'm, you know, uh, I'm struggling with pornography. Right. I'm struggling with, um, uh, you know, unfaithful to my wife. Or I'm struggling even to have to become a Christian. I'm struggling in my faith. Right. You know, but when we admit our weakness and we lean upon each other, you know, there's a lot of things that's like, bro, I need a prayer. You know, like for me, I know that one thing in my life has always been the, the you know, partying or, you know, drinking or, you know, I've, I've never really got into drugs and so thank God that's never really been a factor in my life, but always just that kind of life, that, that, um, life of excess, you know what I mean? That life, especially Marie kind of, you know, being in the industry, uh, the hospitality industry for most of my life, it's always there, that always excess of it, that very flashy, you know, all high level, you know, food, wine, drinks, cocktails, all that stuff like that. And it, it's always been a factor of, kind of trying to pull me away from Christ. But now, you know, it's like, it's different because I'm in that, but I'm out of that. It's like being in the world, but not of it. So for me, I've always struggled about that. Um, so we can talk about that, but it's like when we lean in on each other, and we say, hey man, I need prayer for this. And even recently with, with the loss of my job and my anxiety and my, my depression, I've told guys, hey man, I'm really struggling with depression. I'm really trying to, you know, do this. And can you pray for me? And there's been guys that have been checking up on me. You know, there's been uh, some sisters in, in Christ, my cousins as well. She's a Christian and you know, she checked up on me. Those little things like that are so important when you just have that, hey, man, I'm just checking in with you. You good? You know, and for me, I always call people. I'm still old school. You know, I yeah. like to hear somebody's voice. You yeah, know, you've, you always, you've always been really good about yeah. that. Yeah, well, you know, but for me, it's you know what it is? is because I don't have that in my life. And I want to be that person because if I don't have it, and I have the connections. I mean, I'm, I think I'm really well connected to people. I mean, if yeah, I want to, yeah, you are. I, I, I got a, I have a huge, huge, um, like social and uh, business circle. Right. But I'm still lonely a lot of times, man. When it comes to walking with Christ, and I know that if I have this circle that I can't reach out to, how much more people who don't have my circle don't, don't reach have out, that, right? Yeah. So I always try to be that person. Well, that's, that, that's me too, man. Yeah. I mean, uh, my buddy Tommy was telling me yesterday, man, you, just, you, sh you should read, you should have reached out to me. You should call me when you're having these issues. Yeah. But see, again, we don't feel like it, man, because, because of how we've been trained. How well, because well, you've been trained to like, I grew up, I remember one time my buddy Greg, he was like, uh, hey man, you know, let me know if you need a ride out to LA somewhere. It was, this is like over a year, a couple of years ago. I still remember it. Uh -huh. He was like, let me know, because I told him I think I got a job or something out in L.A. or something. And he's like, hey, man, let me know. I didn't have a car. He's like, let me know if you need a ride. And I, t I was on the bus, and I texted him, man, I wouldn't ever do that to a friend, man. You know, like, I'm never going to inconvenience you. Right. And I don't know how he felt. I kind of got the feeling he felt awkward about that statement, you know, because in my mind, I thought I was, I thought I was being a good friend by not asking for help. 
and by being like, I don't want to disturb you, and I don't want to. Yeah, but if if people offer, you know what I mean. Yeah. If people offer, there's a lot. Of, that's that's true as well. You know what I mean? It's like listen, you, you do it. And sometimes people just offer to offer. So you, you know, right. you, you kind of kind of feel it out. You really yeah. do. But because like, I really, I'm gonna call you up. And I'm gonna make you take me out. Uh, drive me. Listen, somewhere we, we've for, all been in need sometime or another yeah. in our lives, man. You know what I mean? But it's kind of like you know, you're not gonna be his personal. You know, he's not gonna be your personal chauffeur. chauffeur but yeah, he's, yeah. he's he's asking you. But, that. Yeah, but you know, the thing was at that time, man. Like I was in a place because you and Greg and Gino. Mm -hmm. I mean, this was like the first time in my life. Like I was actually having actual friends oh like that's cool. true friends oh, that's good you know my friends before were the kind of guys i would try to hook up my girl or you know they were they were my friends as long as i was getting high and drunk right. with them you yeah know? plenty of people to do that with man so this was like was like a new territory you know like like i, I wasn't accustomed to having friends like jujitsu changed a lot of things right. and one of those things was building actual connection with people where it yeah. wasn't based on something negative it was actually based on something because i you know i grew up you know spending a lot of time alone yeah I, I spent a couple of new year's eves you know as a young person just by myself in the park with beer bottles you oh, know it must have been tough bro it was man it yeah. really was tough because I, how old were you then i think one of those times i was like 22 and oh dude, that time sucks I, that's your time to be with everybody and everybody's happy and i had nobody man oh dude that like, sucks I, I i i've come real close to the edge i'm yeah. almost getting teary eyed just thinking about it but i, I was teetering on the edge man and and uh I just could not get myself together. I alienated myself and I didn't know how to like conduct myself with people, you know, like, yeah. like I didn't know how to be an actual friend to somebody. I was no good to anybody. Wow. You know? And uh, that's a story for another time. But, well, you know, the thing about that is that, um, <clears throat> you know, you take yourself out of that situation before people, it's a defensive mechanism. You take yourself out of a situation before people can do that to you in your life, especially if you've been hurt in the past. Mm. It's like that man. Remember that uh, movie, Goodwill Hunting? Yeah, you know, it's like when he takes himself out of that, and he like breaks up with Skyler and all that. It's like, and then um, Robin Williams, I forgot it, the doctor, or whatever his yeah. name is, but he says it's a defense, defensive mechanism. Don't you realize that he does that to people before they could do that to him? Mm. You know, and sometimes we take ourselves out of that. And, and you know, sometimes if you don't have a good friend, you don't know how to be a good friend. Right you now, like I had somebody in once in my life tell me, you know, Justin, you're a better friend to me than I am to you. And I thought to myself, I was like, wow, dude, that guy really had the balls to say that. But, you know, and I thought to myself, do I want that kind of friend? I want, you know, we want, there needs to be reciprocity in our lives. You know, there's a song by uh, Need to Breathe, right? It's a Christian band. And it says, uh, brother, let me be your shelter. You know, um, you can call me, you know, anytime uh, when the, you know, uh, I'll be the one to call. You know, I'll be the one for you to call um, when the storms are, you know, driving in. And again, going back to the Christian ministry and men's ministry, it's like we need to be honest with each, other, with each other and we need to be there for each other. And sometimes, sometimes you're going to get the guy who's really needy. You know, trust me, I've been, yeah. I've been really needy in my life. And I'm usually, not, I, I, it sucks because, you know, where I'm at right now in my life, I feel needy and I don't like that. But maybe that's where God wants me to be. Maybe that's my desert right now where I, I just, all of a sudden I say, well, um, you know, God, I need people but they're letting me down, so I'm going to turn to you. And that's a way of, like, aiming, like isolating. I'm in my own desert. It's just walk, me walking with God. Yeah. And, you know, that's very true. It's like, you know, we need to all, but we need, also need to be there for each other as spiritual men. It's like, hey, listen, when you have that, it's like a team, right? You're in the team, and you all have different parts. One's first base, one's second base, one's outfield, one's shortstop, one's catcher, or whatever, pitcher. You know, but you're all part of a team, and you're all working towards one goal, but you all earn the victory. When a point comes, it doesn't say, oh, okay, point for first base. No, it's just point for, you know, los dollars, you know what I mean, yeah, yeah. or whatever, wherever it be. Well, it's uh, a little closer to you, just a tad. Oh, sure. Well, that? this, and so that's the whole, uh, down, actually. Oh, down? Down and over to you. Just down, like this, down and over. Right there. Right, there. Oh, right in your face. Oh, hello. So that, that's, what, that's what brings it into the, you know, how, education, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of men don't know how to build these networks of other Christian men and how to, how to like, build that network of friends, good quality men who you can have in your life that you can come to with certain types of problems, be able to like actually fill that out. And yeah. Like, you know, what can I share with this guy or, you know, what can I share with this guy over here? How receptive is, is this guy over here to hearing me or, you know, to, I got this problem. Right. And I'm having a little, you know, my faith is kind of weak right now maybe. And, uh, you know, I, I want to talk, I want to talk to this guy, but I don't know if I can, you know, and a lot of it for me has just been, man, putting, put, put yourself out there. Yeah. It's yeah, kind of like yeah. with this podcast. It's like, don't worry about what other people think. 
Yeah. People, of course, people are going to judge you. If you're not being criticized, you're not doing it right. I yeah. don't know. Like, just just get over that on this. Yeah. Just do it, do it, do it. And the more I do this podcast and the more I, I do my motivational videos in the morning and go running and stuff, the, the more confident you I got to get you a new outfit, by the way. I'm tired of the black. Let's do something like, let's liven it up. You mean let's like my like, eyebrows and stuff? No, no, no your, your, my, my your hat and your, no, like, let's, let's put you in white or something yellow, something fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, it's, I, it's the only thing I got, and it's cold in the morning. Yeah, so like, I the, heard that. The hat keeps me. I heard that. We could your beanie. Make it look like a cholo. Oh, man. <laughs> trying to avoid all that. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, <laughs> but, but I like, I actually like running at three in the morning. That's crazy. But, I, uh, that's definitely not my thing. I, I love it, man. That's the only cool. problem is, though, I'm having a problem is, is that I'm trying to figure out is that when I get to work uh-huh. around hour three, uh-huh. hour four, I'm yawning. Yeah. And, you know, I work on a computer. So right, I'm just like, that's I, I'm hard. starting to fall asleep. Like, right. oh, my God, I'm about to die right now. Right. You can't take a break. You can't like when I used to work out. I actually, I worked out in the day. It was always easy to do that and come home, take an hour nap, and then go to work. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm in Beverly Hills right now. That's though, what so I'm saying. That's, that's, that's kind of impossible. Yeah, but your body get used to it after a while. You think so? I think so. I hope so, man. Yeah. But you know, the the, the, the trouble I've been having is getting to sleep early enough. Because mm. you know, by the time I get home, I still have a few things to do, and then I want to be in bed. But right when I get home, like well, how I long think, you had that job? Since February fifth. Okay, so not like what? Not even two months. Not even so two months. You give yeah. yourself six months. You think so? And I, I think so. all of a sudden yeah, I'll be able to operate to, off of six hours of sleep. You're gonna have to like actually you're gonna you train your body to go to sleep earlier, mm-hmm. right? And then you're gonna your 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 circadian rhythm or whatever the heck I call it, your body rhythm or who knows what the, the, the whatever they call it yeah. whatever they call it. But you're gonna you know your body clock, yeah. right? You're gonna have to write your body clock. Um, but if I can step back for a second, you know, you talked about um, uh, how do we connect with other guys, right? Yeah. In that mm-hmm. thing, that's right, and. We had the, one of the guys actually in my men's group on this last Tuesday, actually, how, how does this happen? And I said, and I looked and I said, this is exactly how it happens right here. Look at this. I said, because you're going to find somebody in this group that you're going to connect with, right? You're going to connect with, you're not going to connect with everybody. You, you just no, are you're just right? not. You're just not. I mean, that's, that's okay, but at least you're there for a common goal. Right. Not everybody, listen. You I, at least know you're in a group of men who are who are trying to live holy lives right. through through Christ? Right. You at least know you have that. Right. 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 And then so you can connect. It's like, hey, you know, good talking to you. Hey, we should grab some. You know, we should grab some lunch sometimes. Right. It's like, oh, okay, let's do that. You know, and like, like there's, there's this guy who was a new guy, and I saw him. You know, he would talked about some problem he was having, and I can totally relate to that. And I and I he's new, right? And I haven't seen him for a long time at church. So I reached out to him. I said, hey, man, you mind if I get your number? I said, I'm gonna call you and check in on you, you know. Just, but just that, yeah. you know, just checking on people like that. Just again, and then he sent me a text today after church. Hey, man, it's great seeing you. Thank you so much. It's a better day. I was like, cool, man. I'm happy for you. Let's stay in contact. But he may one day turn out to be one of the best friends I have, yeah. or he may not. But it's okay. It's but it's about those little things like that. That's about those buildings. You're gonna find people. It's like you and I connecting through jujitsu, right? right? There's a lot of people that I like. Cool, you know. I see them. Hey, hands, you know, high five you know, slap bump, you know, fist bump, whatever you may call it, you know, and a big hug. But I don't talk to them outside of jiu-jitsu. You know, I don't, yeah, I don't see them. There's plenty of that. Right? Yeah. There, but but there, there was still camaraderie there. But it's Absolutely. just a certain level of that. Some people are close to some player, but it's about that ministry. And you're going to find those relationships. And I think when we place ourselves into those men's group, we give our, their, the ability to find those relationships right. really substantially increases as opposed to us not being in those groups. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, I think I, I, I'd like to be the guy – uh, what's helped me to build connections is putting myself out there as that guy who you can come to. Yeah. Because yeah, there are uh, obviously there's there's a lot of people who go to jujitsu, especially at our gym where there's hundreds of dudes. Like uh, I like I like to feel I like to think that those men know that that I am open to friendship and to fellowship with them. You know, like yeah. I, I'm I totally feel like I put myself out there for that, and that helps me to build these connections. Like, like instead of going at it, like I'm looking for something from you yeah. that I'm here and I can, I have something to offer you, yeah. you know, I have something to offer. And I know that probably won't, not everybody will feel that way um, because we're all going, whatever we're going through up here. Um, but what's helped me connect is just my willingness to, to seek out fellowship. That's you know, you did that, right? Cause you have people that did it for you. Absolutely. Right. And that so was you. That, yeah. Well, that was, you. that was you, man. That. Because uh, when I first met you, you you more you know reaching out for me but you were more talking to me mm. you know like right. i was more like quiet hey cool this guy's talking to me but 
it, it was it was actually you who were who was actually oh wow dude you know, i didn't know that at least how i felt to me oh thank you like, i was like man this guy's actually i i, I recognize really that you looking. were offering me yeah very very I was very like, good looking like, just this guy almost looks as good as looking as i do but I could tell that I could tell through your actions that you were offering me friendship. Yeah, and and it's interesting too because you were you were conservative, mm-hmm. I sure and am. I wasn't. Yeah, I know you remember like this is like the Trump era, America, America, <laughs> and you know Red I was, Kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> and you know I was I was uh, I never considered myself a liberal, but I was yeah. very independent, right. leaned, leaned left, and you know now I lean right. Obviously, right. Uh, it, I naturally changed to the con- change that way once I started going to church. Uh, but I remember how we didn't see, we clearly didn't see eye to eye politically, mm-hmm. but that didn't change how you treated me. No, man. I you didn't. know, it didn't. Yeah. And, and I remember I w- that I always took, no- I always took notice of that. And I also noticed, like I said, that you were, I could tell you were offering friendship. Yeah. And I was like, I'm jumping on that. Uh, cool, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna seize the moment. Here. That's great, dude. Praise and God, and I'm dude. glad we did. Yeah, yeah. praise God, man. Because look at, I mean, you've been such a good friend to me. Yeah, good. You know, and okay. I, I, you know, after all these years, I feel like we, you know, We're I close. see you like a brother. Yeah, yeah I, see, I see you as my. I, I think you're like a little brother to me, man. Yeah, you know man. I mean, I'd like a, you know, like it has you that. that little brother that that'll that'll spank you if he has to. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, you know, like, I say that in the most endearing terms, you know, what I mean, yeah. because like you know, obviously we're you know we have a little bit age gap between us, but there's still you know there's still a uh, uh, a peer fellowship, you know, between yeah, us, especially, yeah. especially because we're both, you know, also now we're not now the same rank, you know, what I mean? <laughs> actually you outrank me actually now, but that's because I train more. Than exa- that's, that's true. That's true. <laughs> I'll, I'll follow up. But, yeah. but you know, the thing about it is, is that um, those kinds of friendships are important. And I think that for us, I'm naturally, you know, I, I'm, I'm a natural extrovert. I mean, I, I just talked to, you know, my wife says, I talk to anybody. It's true. Yeah. Um, I love talking to people. I love talking and just getting to know people no matter what. You know, some people aren't down with that. Some people are really quiet. It's like, oh, cool. You know, yeah. but eventually, you know, they'll come around. It's like, hey, Justin, how are you? Good to see you. Good to see you too, man. You know, but it's also, it, it's now giving me the, um, I now use that platform to share my faith. And I, and I always I don't just write out blurb like you know Jesus loves you. You know, it's yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, but it's like uh yeah, yeah, yeah. when yeah, when I'm tact. Yeah, tactful. when I'm when I'm talking to people, it's like oh, oh I'll say oh and something great happens, like, oh praise God. Yeah, you know, I really mean it. Yeah, too. little things like that. Yeah, and yeah, like yeah. Oh, oh what? Praise God. Are, are you Christian? Yeah. yeah. You know, I, yeah. I trip out because I, I have it. um I have two friends who recently came back to Christ. And I've been very fortunate to kind of be in their lives when they did. And I said, isn't that funny? We've been friends for all this time and we never know each other, but that, that we both follow Christ, like, you know, yeah. but we were Christians, but you know, we're both in some way and we're all in some way prodigals. I am the quintessential prodigal. I, you know, that is exactly me. I was there and, you know, I went out and I squandered everything that I got, you know, I squandered my spiritual riches mm-hmm. and I came back and I was willing to eat pig scrap, but you know, God just said, no, man, you know, here he is. Here's the best coat, you know, kill the fatty calf. And, there's been a lot of, there's been an abundance of grace on my life. I mean, no matter what, even throughout from when I've been a child. And so for me, you know, I always try to extend grace up people uh, in my life because of the grace that I've been given. Mm-hmm. And also I use, like I said, I use my platform um, or my, uh, my social circle to in some way talk about Christ, you know, yeah. and I don't do it offensively because some people take it offensively and, you know, you might turn people off. And you got to be really tactful when it comes to that yeah. kind of stuff. And yeah, you I try not to do. Y- that. Yeah, you got to just be. You got to show them the love of Christ. And listen, unfortunately, not everybody's going to make it. You know, especially I mean, with family, man. Yeah, you, oh, may, you may not be the right guy. Oh you know? no! Totally. It reminds me of the story of Jesus. You know, when he goes to Nazareth, and, mm. and people just like, isn't that the? Isn't that Joseph's son? Yeah, <laughs> you know no, like, no, yeah, yeah, this guy. <laughs> that's Jay's from down the hood, man. Yeah, like, man. Yeah, What's that guy? This guy's a manger, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Uh, I didn't realize how how. Uh, what an extrovert I was mm. until I got got off the sauce. There you go. As soon as I sobered up and and stopped smoking per- pot, that's all depressants. You know that, right? It never occurred to me. Yeah, alcohol is a complete depressant. It, it made me. It made me exactly the opposite of what I wanted to be. Yeah. And now that I'm completely 100 percent sober, I, I I chat people up at in line at the grocery store. See? I'm chatting. I'm chatting people. I'm meeting all these people and it's making great. new friends and oh, acquaintances. I mean. I mean, my friend, friends like like yourself and like guys like Gino and Greg, you know, th- those friends are still a very small circle. Right. But but I'm making all these connections and and having fellowship with people that I normally wouldn't have. 
this fellowship with. Yeah, also God's changed you too. It's not only the sauce, but it's also God changing you. You know, one hundred percent. You can be completely sober, but you know, but honestly, dude, great, great job, man. Getting on, right. you are like you're sober now, right? In April. Yeah, dude, that's amazing. Easter, like that's just amazing. like a week after Easter. That's amazing. Uh, yeah, we're coming up on Easter in a couple of weeks. Yeah, there's thirty first, right? Yeah. Yeah, we have, yeah, we're going to have, are you going to, uh, you, you guys probably have a big old thing at your church, right? We have uh, like four services. I was going to go to all four. Oh, no, so yeah. you're, you're at WAC, right? Shout yeah. out to Wood Area Christian Church. Wood Area Church. Christian Church, baby. And the, <laughs> and the calling in Pasadena, Pastor Michael Al- Alfaro. We'll Heck see you. Yeah. If you guys want to come to church, either Wood or Pasadena, we got you. We got somewhere yeah. for you. Absolutely. Oh, by the way, too, I've forgotten. I'm going to plug it right now, but I'm being baptized. I'm being baptized again on the 7th, dude. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I love it, man. Yeah. And you know why? You know why I love that uh, hat that I asked you to get from me yesterday is because uh, that was the hat that they gave me for uh, being. Uh, actually, it wasn't for my baptism. Uh, it was actually for when I became a member. Oh, cool! And so I, lo- I wear that hat with pride, you know. And and I'm I'm sad because I lost it. You call? You didn't lose it yet. I haven't lost should, it yet. I got to call Ron and see if he found it. You should. I'm sure somebody's hopefully, not going to. Hopefully not, he just put it to the side. Nobody's going to take that old, like, no, that, yeah, that old it's, sweaty hat. You know yeah, I mean? exactly. Well, I yeah. hope he just toss it away. You uh, know, I met, I, met uh, I think it's his wife, too, right? His wife trans. He's your brown yeah. belt. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She's a black belt now. Oh, she is? Yeah, oh, they yeah, got, think, she got a brown. I think she got promoted. Very I'm pretty cool. sure she's a black belt now. Very cool. Well, what they're doing over there is amazing, dude. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And now they're going to have tournaments over at the East LA College. Oh, they are? He mentioned that yesterday. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's big, cool. big shout out to uh, uh, yeah. uh, Ron and I forget his wife's name, but they're doing great things over there, man. Yeah, and I'm super happy for them. Ron and <laughs> Mrs. Ron. Yeah, Ron and Mrs. Ron. <laughs> sorry, we'll we'll give you a name later. <laughs> I know, yeah, but sorry. she's a, she's a really nice. Yeah, she's really I chatted, nice. I chatted yeah. up her a little bit yesterday, but um, you know, actually, I'll be baptized on the seventh, and uh, people were telling me, you know, you don't have to be baptized again. You already, I said, totally. I listen. I already know. But and I said, you I don't, just, you don't have to not be baptized. Again. Exactly. I said, you know, <laughs> I said, it's just time for a fresh wash. It really is. Man. You know what I mean? It's like a new paint job. So Absolutely. I think it's really, for me, it's really kind of, um, some, um, symbolic of my renewed walk with Christ. You know, for me, um, yeah, like I <laughs> get emotional a little bit. Right. But yeah. I mean, really, I think that it's really important that I do this and it's kind of a symbol. It's like uh, a public declaration, you know, for me. Um, so I'm, I'm really happy. So, and we have some people, my cousin, you know, sh- she hasn't gone to church in a long, long time and I always invite her, right? When exactly is this? The uh, 7th? The 7th. So, yeah. April 7th. Okay. I'll be April there. April 7th. My man. I will be there. All right. Cool. I don't remember if, if I, we got kids or what, but it, I will be No there. problem, man. Well, you guys are invited. So, yeah. um, but it starts at, service starts at 11 and baptisms are, uh, at like 1230 after outside. So we're really cool. Um, but that's another way it slimmed down and wear my uh, little large gi. I mean, the, the, um, no gi, no gi wear. <laughs> yeah, keep it up, man. Uh, thanks. You know, you um, can't tell. I mean, the, I realize right now looking at you through the camera, it act, cameras actually do uh, put 10 pounds. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> Edit that out. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, I, I actually I was kind of um, thinking about it. And I was like, well, because my, my pastor was talking about baptism. And I was like, I just sat there for a second. I talked to my wife. I said, you know, I think about being baptized. I'll do it. And I was like, really? And she's like, yeah, you should do it. And I was like, okay, cool. And I talked to my buddy of mine. And he's like, bro, you should totally do it. And I said, if God is telling you to do it, my mom says, if God is telling you to do it, just do it. You can't, you can't, you know, can never have much, too much baptism. Yeah. Right. So um, that's a cool thing. But again, I think it's completely uh, in line with what I'm doing now in my life, what God is doing in my life rather, um, and kind of, you know, directing me, uh, being a different man. So, but uh, it's amazing. Yeah, and I'm happy for you, man. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. I can't it, wait to see it. Yeah, dude, it's made me cool. I want you to record it in slow motion. So, <laughs> so you got it, buddy. I'm gonna get the water barely like flickering off of you. <laughs> my my friend's dad. It's funny because he's like, "Hey, man, I'm gonna go. I just want to make sure they dunk you three or four times, man. You didn't need it." That was like funny. He's a pastor, so they're gonna put you. They're gonna put you down and be like, "No, nah, one more time." Exactly, exactly. And it's funny. Um, my cousin's being baptized as well, and her. Uh, a different cousin, not the cousin that doesn't, doesn't, isn't following Christ. And her husband's going to be baptized. And our friend as well, she really wow. recommitted her life to Christ. She, he's going to be baptized as well. Fantastic. Those four of us in our circle. You guys going to do anything after? Or? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, you know what? Our church is actually doing like a little celebration. Okay. Community celebration. So I think there's going to be like tacos and, you know, some banda or something like that. A little DJ. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> right? <laughs> but it's cool. But, um, you know, the church has been really instrumental because our church is really cool because it's, um, I don't like to call it seeker friendly because that can ha- have a negative term. Um, but there's, it's, it's really um, 
uh, it's a great environment. It's a great environment, especially for people who don't, uh, who aren't following Christ to come. And it's not really kind of, it's not too intense. It's not fire and brimstone. Um, you know, it's a very accepting message, but there's also truth in it. Yeah. Our, our, our pastor doesn't hide the word. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't talk about stuff that's not uncontroversial. He said, listen, this is not me. It's the word. This is what it says. Hey, this is the way we're going to do it. And I think it's really important today that a lot of pastors and a lot of leaders, we kind of dumb down the word uh, because we don't want to offend people, but yeah. the word is offensive. It, it really is. is. I, I don't people, know what yeah. people have against fire and brimstone. I, I mean, yeah. I mean, Jesus talked more about hell <laughs> than he did about anything yeah. else. You know, it, it's obviously a real place and it, yeah. people can't go there. Yeah. And, you know, and, what about being truthful? You know what I mean? Today's now like uh, I had a friend and uh, they listened, they couldn't make service and they're like, oh, I didn't like how the pastor was talking about hell. It's like, well, I'm sorry I said, but hell's real. Like, well, you know, well, I don't believe, I said, listen, I understand you don't believe in it. That's your prerogative, you know? And I, I wasn't, you know, well, yeah, like, hey, you're wrong. You know, it's like, hey, listen, I understand you don't believe it, but that's what our word says. And so we're going to talk about that. And we don't, we don't say it as, you know, conviction. That, that's not, that the pastor wasn't convicting you. The spirit was convicting you. Right. You know, you, your own, your own fingers were convicting you. So whatever it is that you're, you know, you're going through, just kind of let that set a little bit and then kind of re revisit the, the message later. I said, listen, just listen again, or just come to church with us one day. And I go, okay. Um, but going back to as well, my cousin, like she hadn't, uh, you know, with, with the baptism, I've been trying forever to get her to church, you know, and she finally agreed to come. She's okay. You're going to be baptized. I'll do that. Yeah. So, you know, that kind of platform there just to share Christ. And maybe you can see the difference in my life. Maybe you can't, who knows, but if we get you in the right environment, you know, we want you to come to Christ. You know, it's like, well, you're pushing your, your beliefs on people. It's like, no, I'm not. I'm sharing my, I'm sharing the thing that has saved and changed my life with you. Mm -hmm. It's not about convicting you or judging you or anything like that, but it's about sharing something. And I always use this, this metaphor about us being in the desert, right? And we're all, we're all thirsty and we're all dying of thirst. And all of a sudden I come upon this oasis and I'm jumping in the water and I'm drinking it. And this is a real oasis. And you're there sitting on the, the shoreline right there. And I come over and I say, here, here's water. And you're telling me, well, why are you, you know, why are you giving me this? It's like, well, would you do that? Would you really say that? Or would you listen? Or would you drink that water that I'm giving you? Or even yeah. worse, they're like, it's a mirage. Yeah, it's a mirage. It's not real. Right. It's like, listen, jump in to feel how great it feel is, it. right? feels good. Mirage feels or not, good. it feels great. Right. Man. Exactly. Yeah. That's the best way to go. Right. Um, but, you know, that's the way I kind of like it. And I say, you know, I'm telling you about this because, because I love you. And I saw a meme, you know, obviously I'm, you know, on, on Instagram a lot. And <coughs> right, understatement. To, to understatement. Da, da, da. <laughs> Shout out. I got three accounts. <laughs> Actually, two only, but. Yeah. Um, but you know, I saw this meme one time and it said, uh, when you get to heaven, somebody runs over to you and says, thank you. It's because of you that I'm here because you share Christ with me. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's those little things like that. And that's what it's mean really means. Dude, it's so important. You know, it's funny cause I, I talk to certain people and th you know, they'll tell me, I'm thinking of a couple of people specifically where they're like, that, that's a bunch of non, you know, I've read it before. It's all, you know, there's so many contradictions. Just, you know, it's not real. It's just a book. It's written by men. All, all these, all this, all this, all this. And then recently, it, you know, because we're in a group chat, I saw, I saw this one particular person go, oh, look at this, what's happening about the thing that's going on in Britain about the, the not giving kids anymore, um, puberty blockers and all oh, stuff, yeah, right? Uh -huh. Not to get all into that. Not that I have a problem getting into that, but... But but this person's like, oh God or God bless Great Britain, oh. and then and then and then somebody commented and then get, then the same guy goes, amen, <laughs> and I'm like, ah, he's using <laughs> he's using that language, yeah, <laughs> he's yeah. using the, I wonder if uh, this guy is finding God, yeah, <laughs> you know, and, and and that's why that's why you never keep your you know if you have an opportunity you know if I have an opportunity just to like you said earlier. I just kind of casually weave it into my, right. you know, like, oh, that, that's amazing, man. God does crazy stuff, doesn't he? Just something as small as that, yeah. you know, could actually, one, reveal each other, re reveal yourself to somebody else. Oh, man, he kind of said, thank God, two times. I wonder if he's a Christian. Yeah. Next thing you know, you guys know. Yeah, you know? it's like, hey, hey, by the way, you, you believe in God, man? It's like, yeah, hey, yeah. you go to church? Yeah. I always actually ask people that. I say, hey, do you, do you go to church? And they're like, yeah, I go to this church. Like, oh, really? And it's like, depends upon what church they go to, you know? And, you know, and I was like, oh, really cool. Where do you go to church? It's like, yeah, you know, we should come. You know, and what I tell people a lot of times, like, hey, if you want to come to church, listen, I want to invite you. Yeah. And all I, do, all I say is that. 
And I tell my pastor, because, you know, we've, we've, my wife and I have fortunately been really fortunate to have a lot of people come to our church and visit. And he says, well, how, how do you invite people to church? I said, I just say, hey, you want to come to church? And that's all I say, yeah, yeah, because yeah. I don't do anything. It's not nothing that I do. It might be the relationship that gets them there, but it's about God. It changes that. You know, I want to give all glory and honor and praise to Jesus Christ, man. Absolutely. He's, the, he's the reason why, you know, they're giving that. So it's not me. Maybe I'm, I'm, I'm helping them. Maybe I'm showing them the path or whatever it may be, or just putting them on the road or just saying, hey, walk with, you know, come to the, come over here. But yeah. it's about God. When you get them in an the environment and they start to say stuff that's there, you know, today we had, I think we had like six people today in in service give their, Christ, their, their lives to Christ, Amen. which is great, man. Yeah. But it's like, you know, the, the Bible says that when one person gives their life to Christ, the angels in heaven rejoice, right? Wow. So there's a party going on up there Absolutely. today, right? And to think about that, it's like those six people, how do we know who... Who invited those people? How did they come to it? The, all those little things, but all it takes is one person to say, hey, want to come to church? And that's all it takes. It doesn't take me saying, hey, you know about Christ? You know, yeah, Jesus yeah, yeah. loves you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you're not, I'm not throwing a track at them. You know what I mean? It's right. like, I'm not saying, hey, you know, I have the Bible here. You know, the, those are the people, there are people that react to that. There are people that are, are um, led to Christ that way. There yeah, really are. But sure. it, it takes all kinds. It takes a village to, you know, lead people to Christ. Right. You know what I always do is uh, when I'm talking to people, it doesn't matter. And this is even how I, I found out that my my students at the UFC are Christians. Mm. Because uh, when I was I was teaching like a boxing class or uh -huh. something, and I was like, yeah, you guys, you know, I'm also the jiu-jitsu class in the morning. You guys will love jiu-jitsu if you've never done it before. I preach it like I preach Jesus. You know, come out and join oh, the class. Cool, huh? And, you know, I just kind of weave it in. There, you know? right? And then people, that's exactly how I, I uh, me and my students realized we were all oh, Christians. That's dope. Just because I say little things like that. That's and like, awesome. And they're like, are you Christian? And like, yeah, you guys want to talk about Jesus? I could talk about Jesus all day, guys. Right. You know, just being silly. Yeah. But but it, it's it's such a door opener. Well, you know, the, the thing too is, I think especially in today's society right now, is that we are taught to be quiet about Christ. Yes. And that's not true, dude. Yes. That's not true at all. You don't want it, but, you know, you don't want to offend people and you want right. to be careful about that, but don't be ashamed of the gospel of Christ, Never man. be ashamed of the gospel. Never at all. And yeah. I, I think that a lot of people... You know, there are so, if I was, if, if I was some kind of, you know, uh, pornographic distributor, they have no problem talking about what they did. If I had, if I was, right, they, right. they really don't, That's it, interesting. they really yeah. don't, they, you yeah. know, if, if I was, uh, you know, listen, I, I, I'm, you know, everybody knows I'm, you know, a Bible believing Christian, I'm conservative, I'm a big 2A advocate, um, but I don't force my, my, my beliefs on anybody. Yeah. One of the things I don't like to hear from uh, people who are, uh, proclaim themselves to be christians and i'm not saying they're not but they'll say uh i'm a christian but i i don't i don't like to bother other people with that no uh, no it's like no man you gotta you gotta talk about it man you got yeah. you have to put those little things up there and i said you know think about it as you sharing like let's go back to the thing about that meme i talked about about somebody coming up to you in heaven and saying hey because of you because of what you told me i'm here and you think about that it's like you know, there are people out there, I'm sure we've all seen them, they're on the street corner yelling Christ and all that stuff. And that's great. God bless those brothers and sisters, right? They're bold. They're really out there. And they may never lead anybody but one person to Christ, but it was worth it. Right. All those hours spent in there, all those, I'm sure they get heckled. I'm sure all that stuff happens. But we're all responsible in some way or another to to profess our, our you know, if you deny me before men, I'll deny you before my father. God, God calls us, literally gives us a command he to does. go out there and, and, and to tell other people about Jesus yep. about the gospels and but what does society tell us right so we've gotten we coward and that's the thing let's go back to the men's ministry about making bold disciples of men yeah you know and when you have confidence if you it's kind of like the same way you were you know when you started jujitsu you weren't confident right when no. you were on the sauce you weren't confident but look no. at yourself changing through jujitsu you know you're looking at yourself through Christ and look at yourself sober a year after. Now you have this confidence that you didn't have before. And now I got to use it. Yeah. And now you got to use because it. And so that's the same thing with people. When we get those men in there and we start ministering to them and we help edify and build each other up in Christ, in Christ, right? And then we give them a boldness and a confidence in Christ that they might take to their family, they might take to their work, they might take to their, you know, the place of employment, work is employment, but like, you know, their, their uh, gym whatever it may be, but that's how it spreads. It's like, again, fire starter, you know what I mean? Jump, 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 jump. Just like the same way like a fire spreads. It's the same way that, you know, 
dude, there's going to become a revival. And, and absolutely revivals, I think, I think it's starting now. I mean, you see a lot of things that are happening, you know, campuses now are becoming having this Christian, you know, if I was a Satanist or, you know, uh, LGBT, the, the, the alphabet mafia, right. And I want to go out there and I want to profess, nobody's going to say anything to me. Oh, right on. You're so bold. You're so brave. But what about if I want to express my, my faith in Christ, all of a sudden now everybody has a problem. Yeah. Well, why is that? Yeah. It's okay to profess that you're a Buddhist, right? Oh, you're a Buddhist. Oh, oh yeah. you're a mob Muslim. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're, 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 you're this or you're that. Yeah. Oh, you're right. As soon as you profess to be a Christian, there's just something that goes on with people. They just get angry and they hate you. Yeah. You, well, you, you they, cause the world hates the truth. The world hates the, the truth. World hates That's truth. exactly what it I mean, is. Yeah. Cause it's so, I mean, you talk about Muslims, right? It's like, well, why don't they give Muslims the same amount of crap they give Christians? Why is that? Because they don't believe they don't believe in they believe in man and a woman, right? They don't believe in um, in you know the alphabet mafia. It's interesting, right? Right? Is it yeah, yeah. crazy? And, and not only that, but these a lot of these same people, especially from the LGTV er, uh, community, they will throw you off of a roof. Yeah, and, yep. and you're. You're you're okay with their with their religion <laughs> that literally wants to kill you. They want to kill you. But when it comes to Christians who who genuine Christians who are all about peace, right? You know, and and they love, come as you come as you are, man. Yeah, come as you are. Sin is sin is sin. Sin is sin. sin Absolutely. Is sin. And a lot of people, uh, I've been thinking about this for many months. You know, because uh, you know, you start to see you start to see stuff. You start to notice things, and it's like, wait a minute, though. The Bible makes it very clear. Yes, there are things that are sins. You know, in that same in that same paragraph where he says homosexuals will not inherit the kingdom of God, it also says adulterers, yeah, idolaters. It says drunkards. Yeah, it says every single thing What's you it? could think of. For everybody, all have sinned and come, come short, short of the glory of God. God right? We all sin and fall short, and that it, that it is all sin. I I had a you know we talk about um, our uh, you know people involved in homosexual lifestyle or anybody else that you know. I had not an argument, but um, I was telling buddy, hey, listen, the person who lies, I said, that's still sin. Still sin. It's still the same. The person who murders. It could still condemn you. Still it's still worthy of it's, sending you to hell. It's exactly, it, it's it's all sin in God's eyes. No one sin is, you say, well, you're telling me somebody can be, you know, murder and, yeah. and all of a sudden accept Christ. I said, exactly. It's not a free for all. See, but that's the human mind is they try to reason their way out of this stuff. And it's not about reasoning. It's about God's grace. And it's right. about what they did. Dude, I've done stuff in my life that I am not proud of. I've done stuff that I am worthy of hell, dude. And the only reason I'm not going there is because of the price that was paid on the cross for me. And a lot of people have difference because they're thinking worldly. They're thinking in in in. Uh, carnal terms right they're thinking in worldly terms they're not thinking in spiritual terms where christ has done this man there's been a lot of our brothers and sisters who are involved in lifestyles um that are not of god right, right. and it's all it's all sin but right. they're free to come to christ just like we are man it Absolutely. doesn't it doesn't matter so, we, let, me, so yeah. let me take it a step further you know i've been thinking about this ever since that movie um the voice sound of freedom came out oh i haven't seen it but and you know well the sound of freedom is about you know the sex trafficking of children right, and stuff right, right? So I started thinking about it that night because because I didn't want to see the movie. I was oh. like, man, I do not want to see this movie. I, like, you know, just being a parent, I, right? Yeah, being a parent, having a young child, you know, and children, and, and and I just yeah, it breaks your heart. No one wants, no one, no one in your right mind, had, you know, especially you know, if any rational person, you you want to see those people who are hurting children, you know, hung, you yeah. know. But I started thinking about it, man, and 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 I remember not that exact night, but sometime around that week. I started praying for the not just the children that are victims of this, but for the men who, and the women who are doing it. Yeah, that's right, man. And I started praying for them, like, Lord, please change them. Right. And I thought that's exactly what I need to do because if we you were talking earlier about having a, a revival, right? That revival doesn't need to just hit the colleges or hit the places of you know the the the, the bars, but it needs to hit those dark, Everything. dirty places Everything. where this evilness is happening yeah. to children. Right. So that that way it could stop. God can change anybody. He could though. change anybody, anything. Yeah. There's nothing too great for God. There's Amen. nothing too great for God. It's Amen. it's usually us. Right. And I'm guilty of this. It's it's us who who don't have the faith right. that's required. Did you see the um I, there was a uh, kind of this one of the commercials during Super Bowl and it kind of really um it had all these different ways of uh, saying who God was. God gets us. Jesus gets us. Right. 
But it really wasn't. Uh, it was actually a mockery of Christianity. It was. Yeah. It, it was complete mockery of it, and it was talking about well. This is how God knows. Uh, yeah, God sees you. God loves you. God accepts you how you are. That's true. That's but very He doesn't true. accept your sin. It doesn't accept your sin. And he calls for change, right? He yeah. calls for change. When he sent uh, the one woman who was accused of adultery yeah. in the Bible, yeah. he said, get up. But he didn't say, go about your business. No. He said, go sin, sin no more. more. Right, right. Right. And so that's the thing is like with this, the, with the Christian, actually the Christian community, what they did is they did another, uh, a different video, but the same kind of the same text. But what they did is they showed people who were um, former murderers, former gang members, former drug dealers, former prostitutes, uh, former alphabet mafia, former uh, trans, you know, um, porn stars, all that stuff, and about and seeing how their their life is. There's one girl um, I forgot who she is. She's um, uh, I don't even know what it's called, and I don't really kind of get too into that because I don't want to mess up my mind. But she was like this, you know, these anime hentai like. Um, uh, por pornography girls right yeah and i don't know who she is but i guess she has like something crazy like you know five hundred thousand followers right there and that she was she was very adamant about her immoral lifestyle and she was like hey this is who i am said, i love doing this and everything but she just recently became a christian she gave her life to god and completely got out of the business and she's getting so much flack from even people who were christians right supposed christians and that's such a bad thing because we all have to realize man that we all have some sort of sort of sin and maybe she might stumble, maybe she might not, but the whole thing is she was, it was showed her being baptized and she was like, man, this is it. And she gave up that whole lifestyle, earn, earning probably hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. But she said, you know what, this is nothing. This is, I want my salvation. Right. And that's complete. And I think that we have to be accepting of people like that, that come, come to Christ or that come back to Christ. And we aren't. And we also have to train ourselves that when, when those kinds of people come back into the body or join our body, we need to circle around them. We need to show them the love of Christ. You know what I mean? As long as they're not continuing in their sin, or even if they're struggling with sin, because we all struggle yeah. one way or another, right? Yeah, yeah. But we still need that like, going back to the support of Christian community. I've, I know I've been talking about men, but still about supporting people in the body. When, when, when the Christian body supports each other and really is the church, you know, those that is really acting like the church out of love and support and everything, they can't be stopped. You know, my wife was saying something kind of funny that she noticed when we just had this last uh, election, right? She said, do you notice that everybody there, there's no really conservatives that are manning the booths? And I said, you know, you're right. Why is this? She goes, why is it? I said, I don't know. She's a, do you know what if we all came together? Think about how many millions of us there are. How many millions of, of, of Christians, you know, either one form of like Protestant, Lutheran, whatever it may be, right? Non-denominational, who cares? But I think if we all came together as, you know, like there's like 83 million of us, right? Something absurd. Um, but I think you think about what kind of voting power, what kind of uh, power we have to change the United States of America, about what kind of if we all took to it and said, hey, listen, we're really going to take our faith seriously and we're really, really going to live for God. Yeah. You know, who could change the world, man? Absolutely. You we know can, what? I mean, that's, well, that's, that's the devil's design. Truth. He fractures the church. Yep. Oh, you, these guys got it wrong. Yeah. These guys got it wrong. Everybody's like, our our They're our arguing. religion's better. Yeah. And all that's done by design yeah. by the devil to, to to take away what it is you're talking about yeah. about having that political power, because God, um, I know I read this or, or maybe I heard it somewhere that God wants the church to be one church. Hundred percent. And he and and it's been fragmented. You know the funny thing about when, the more you read this book, mm. the the Bible here, you'll when I started reading it right away, I started to notice things about society that are in direct contradiction to what's in this book. Right. If if in the first third chapter, God, it says that God made man in His image, both male and female, yeah. He made them, yeah. and I was like, oh, that's interesting with all the stuff that's going on right now with boys thinking they're girls and girls thinking right. they're boys, and that you know this being encouraged and and not only encouraged but a lot of money and political power is going into making this thing. You know, because because at first uh, Tessa would tell me that uh, you know that, that all this was going on with the algae with kids and all that kind of stuff, and I was like, no, that's not going on. Like you're being paranoid, and even if that is going on, it's like hardly anything, right? Yeah, it's in the schools, and I was like, no, it's not. Blah blah. blah. And then one day I did a name change for somebody for uh, after they got married. They're just doing a name change uh -huh. for an adult, and I looked at, I started filling out the forms, the California judicial forms, uh -huh. and right there in the third paragraph of the form was saying you could check a box for changing the sex and name of a minor child. And I was like, what the heck? Yeah, man. This is the government. 
Yeah, straight it, sanctioning. It's, it's all undercover right now. It's you all know? undercover. You won't man. notice it. You, know, you won't notice it's like cancer, man. You don't notice yeah. it when, when it's small, but all of a sudden spread to the rest of the body. That's it's what everywhere know, now, yeah, though. It's, it's in the it. schools, like like it's right. in our faces, and yeah. people. I, I'll be honest with you, man. I, I I get so you know my my child's my daughter's teacher, man. She's woke. All yeah. the I, hundreds of books in the classroom, and I was like, oh, this is great. At first, I was like, oh, this is great. So many books. I started looking at all the titles and I was yeah. like, oh man, there's a bunch of woke stuff. Yeah. Everything in here is woke. Even pornogra- porn- pornographic stuff. You know, that, like a lot of the stuff that's in the libraries now, uh-huh. it's teaching them about like their sexuality yeah. or their, it, mm-hmm. it's actually really po- really pornographic. There was um, just recently, I, I saw online, there was this guy that was, he was talking to, uh, I forgot what city council was, but he was reading the book. And they're like, hey, you can't read that kind of stuff. He's like, this is really? him. Yeah, this, but this, really we can yeah, have it we, in the I classroom. I can put it in an elementary school library. Right. right, and that's just wrong, right? See, but again, we're not stepping up. No we're one's not, stepping up. Yeah, that's absolutely right, yeah. and that's part of the reason why I started this podcast yeah. is to build. As I grow in my faith, and as I build more confidence and strength through the Lord Jesus Christ mm-hmm. and through the Holy Spirit, I realize that there's a call for other people who are just like me. Yeah, there's men out there who who were not in good places or damaged or not even realizing that there's a fight and a war going on, and it's like, wake up. Wake up. There's yeah. a war going if on. You don't There's know something it, going on. Artist. Yeah. If you yeah. don't know, you don't yeah. know. Yeah. And that's one of my goals for this podcast and for doing what I'm doing, waking up at three. In the- I don't want to wake up at three in the morning. Yeah. I want to sleep in. Uh, I want to hang out. I hate running. I don't want to run. But I feel this deep desire to bring attention to Jesus and to the, the fact that that we have a lot of men out there that need to, that are weak. Yeah. And need to step up. Well, we also need to, you know, you're talking about being weak men. We also need to re- realize that. We're also called to be physically fit as well. Yeah. You know, we need to be there for our families. And that's actually, you think, oh, would I die for my kid? Yeah, but would you live for your kid? Yeah. You know what I mean? You got to, you, you have to understand that that's the physical body as physical, you know, as physical yeah. ability uh, or prowess develops, so should your spiritual side. Right. And we don't think about that. It's my responsibility. I didn't, I, listen, man, I'm going to be the first to tell you and I, this is public forum, so for me, it's like, listen, I messed up. Yeah, absolutely. I messed up the last, I don't know, mm-hmm. I don't know how many years of I did. Teaching myself. Of, of teaching myself bad habits, getting on, like not being there, not being present. But I did it to myself, man, and it's my responsibility. So, you know, I asked the Father to forgive me, and I just said, listen, I asked my wife, my son to forgive me, and that was a real thing, you know what I mean? And I, it, was, it was really kind of very, um, uh, re- I, I don't know, it lifted it lifted a lot, lifted a burden for me. I just said, man, I'm sorry. I, I wasn't the person I, I, I needed to be. Right. Please forgive me. Uh, I'm, I'm going to change. You know, and it, 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 we weren't in the middle of a fight. It wasn't anything. It was just kind of like one of those things that came up in my life. And I just said, I'm sorry. But, you know, another thing, too, is we need to encourage people. We need to encourage people, not judge them. If they, you know, like, listen, the overweight guy at the gym, you know, people yeah. make fun of him. But, dude, awesome. Great job, bro. Keep going. Right keep going, man. I'm here for you. Hey, like th- that kind of encouragement. We need to encourage each other and do that and really kind of tell you, Hey, listen, cause when you understand that the people that are like you, it's a lot easier to keep going, you know, cause you don't want to be alone. You really don't. I mean, it comes down to it. Sometimes it's just you and God, of course, but I'm telling you about like people who encourage you. And what we're encouraged to do as men as well is encourage other men, encourage them to be spiritually, physically, mentally fit because we're going to need it, dude. I think that, you know, you talk about fragmenting the church. The church is going to f- split pretty soon, in my opinion. I, it re- it's really going to come down to it because there's a lot of false prophets out there. There's a lot of people that are not teaching sound biblical doctrine. You, you know, like another reformation or something? Uh, I don't even know. But, I mean, I uh, think pe- people who are, no, because, I mean, you got Calvinism and, like, you know, that, stuff. You know that those are just maybe doctrines, right? But we're talking about real, like, you know, oh, I believe that God was a she and we're going to pray this and, we you know, we don't take Yeah, I mean, have you seen those videos right? of, like, like uh rainbow pastures oh yeah and oh, going yeah. on where, going. where they're just like they're yep. all about indoctrination it's clearly not right it's, it's clearly messed up right um and we could talk about it another time and we were approaching two hours here oh wow that's crazy yeah, it went by fast yeah um but clearly we have plenty to talk about we do and um you know there there's there's a lot going on there's a lot that i a lot of uh i'm hoping that this show will be able to help somebody yeah and that that's my number one goal here is to help somebody i'm helping myself at the same time by the way Amen. i don't know if anybody could, can tell but no, you could, i'm yeah. also helping myself hey, when you minister to yeah. people you get ministered to as well yeah and yeah, so i mean i'm i'm by no means uh 
Nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. Man. Not at all. It's just our opinion. It's and just an it, opinion. Yeah, yeah, take it. You you get what you you get what you pay for. Yeah. And if you made it this far, man, God bless you. If you, you listen to all two hours, God bless yeah, you. God man. Bless you, yeah. Yeah. you must be, <laughs> yeah. You must be <laughs> more in need than me. <laughs> if you if you like, good things will happen to you. Right. You, 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 <laughs> if you subscribe, there'll be like a pot of gold, right? Yeah, a pot of gold. A pot of yeah. gold. But you know, yeah, I don't know. You know, I, you know, it's funny because uh, uh, we'll wrap it up. But I noticed that you know, the more I go in deeper i go into this walk the deeper my problems get it's not it's it's because in the first time in my life i'm actually facing them head right. on. like like uh my life just almost oh but life is great become a christian life is great uh-uh, you know all of a sudden worse. i got no problems god just takes care of everything no yeah. it's like no man now you're fine now god's finally able yeah. to work with you you know when god sobered me up like he was just getting me ready right so it started to work I, i'm pretty sure he was up there thinking you know i i, I can't do nothing with him right now I, I'm just gonna have to work on his uh, drinking problem and all this other, or maybe uh, I didn't have a porn problem, but maybe someone's porn problem, or maybe someone's anger issues, or yeah. maybe someone's this or that. Like he's gonna get you somewhere to where he can work with you. I yeah. think I don't know if there's anything biblical to support well, that, but but I kind of feel like for me, I started to realize, man, this guy couldn't do nothing with me until he got me sober, until right. he worked in me, and and now I'm in this place where I feel like, okay, now I can start. Now I'm, I'm going to scratch the surface where I can start actually using this guy. Well, God can do anything, man. You he know? can. Yeah, and absolutely. You know, let's go back to parallels real quick with jujitsu. You know, you could be a Chris Wolford and get your black belt in four years, Jeez. or you can be, or you can be a Justin and I yeah, have 15 years to brown belt. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but it all depends on God's timing. But no matter what, you're still on that walk, and that's a great thing to do. Yeah. You know what I mean, so don't ever discount anything like that, dude. But you know, God has a way of working things out in our life you know and god it's god's timing not ours it's um, right. but all we have to be doing is being a willing vessel for god to say you know hey listen and sometimes it's it, you know god can change people i mean i remember i stopped drinking you know when i, when I for a while I, back when i was like 22 and i stopped dead cold boom nothing at all i mean i just you know god completely changed me went from being out you know for the streets into like church and that was a complete God miracle, but you know, God's all, to, it's all in God's timing. Well, let's leave it there. Yeah. All right, brother. That was great, man. Thank you so much for coming out. Thanks for having me. Hope to I, can't, I can't wait to have you again. I'll love to be back, dude. I'll wear something sexier next time. Yeah, I was going to say, man. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. If you, if you stayed with us the whole time, thank you for watching and make sure you share, like, and subscribe this video uh, here with Justin Levis and J, J. B. Rambo. So let's get it.